You're listening to the Overwatch Rundown, a weekly podcast covering the latest in the esports scene of competitive Overwatch. Today is September 2nd, where we play GM for a day and cover a bunch of contenders' finals. Dax, we made it. We're yeah. at episode 100, triple digits, two years. Who thought we'd do this? Uh, we have no do-overs here on the podcast. You know, we've always gone straight through, right through, and that's what we're doing right here today uh, as we cover uh, what we would do with the teams. But there's a lot of news coming out of these teams, Jax. In fact, I mean, it, it, it's kind of odd. Like, we're, we're, we're waiting. We put off the All-Star edition because the All-Star game was terrible. Yes, I feel the All-Star game was bad. So it was okay. We'll make 100 our GM episode, and then the day before or the day of, we want to have, we want to record the episode. All this news comes out. It's like they're gonna steal. They're trying to steal so much of our thunder, but you know it's fine. It's fine. Typical Blizzard fire. fashion, Jax. Typical Blizzard fashion. They try and keep it in. They can't have the little guys steal the thunder playing GM and telling everyone that you would be fired because I'm pretty sure that's what we'd be doing here. In fact, we're, we'll be going through in detail each of the teams coming up for you today on uh, the episodes. We, I do want to start off with a little bit of an announcement to, to make sure everyone's aware where we're standing right now. You know, it's great that we've made it to 100. Love all, all you guys that have been coming around and uh, listening in on the podcast live and YouTube and everywhere we've been. It's been great. Uh, in the future, we're not really going to be on the schedule anymore on Sundays. Like when we, if we continue, it will still be on Sundays at 9 p.m. PST. But we certainly aren't going to be doing an every week thing. Uh, I mean... For the next there, little bit, there, at least. There, there, there's a chance that the next three weeks could have an episode because there will actually be stuff for us to talk about, like Overwatch World Cup qualifiers. It's just we're not sure. Uh, you know, we, we are enjoying. I, all, yeah, all it's like have been talking about. Oh, hey, it's a break. We can reset. We can relax. You know, we take it easy. Same goes for the content creators. You know, we don't have to. We don't have to stay glued to the computer watching Overwatch all the time. And yet, what do I find myself doing? Like most people watching Contenders now that Overwatch League is off. But, you know, it just, we may or may not have an episode. Yeah, right? Uh, that That's true. So, they're, they're, like, I mean, we'll, we'll continue to talk about this. So, so make sure you guys keep keep uh, aware of our Twitter or Discord, if you haven't been on our Discord, too, for that, uh, where we do talk about uh, Overwatch stuff. That will continue regardless of what happens uh, and how long it is before our next episode. But as it stands right now, uh, we have some contenders to talk about this week, Jack. We will be covering the contender stuff after... Uh, after we discuss what's happening with uh, these teams, in fact, rather not what's been happening with these teams, we're going to talk about that, but also as GM, what would GM Jax Blake or GM Lepolos do with some of these teams? I think it's a it's a pretty good thing to do to try and get right into that kind of a discussion, Jax, because there's some some very interesting stuff uh, that we can we can talk about. I it's a good thing I'm not GM man because I, I think I would take it too far and then the owners would be like would come back at the next day Jax you fired everybody we, we don't have a team we don't have a staff we don't have anything what, what are you doing uh, I think that that that's what would happen um, if, if I were an actual general manager yeah, uh, and this is uh, sort of what we're seeing in some of the teams. I mean, maybe that's a bigger question too. If some of these teams, if you were higher than GM, would you keep the GM that you've had or not? That's a that's a very that's good. A, that's a question that I definitely plan on getting into. Uh, but looking at it, we're we're going in specific order here. Left, we're going by end of season, regular season placements, um, not the playoffs because playoffs. Playoffs are who cares, um, but we want to go over. You know, it, it's all about the season, the entire season, which determines which teams will make the playoffs. So if you don't even qualify for the playoffs, and we want to get to you first, you need the most help if you fail to qualify for Overwatch League season one playoffs. I mean, and, you you say playoffs, but there's teams that literally didn't get a win, and that's I yeah. think you know we're starting there. We're starting with the as as you said here the the results determine discussion order, Jacks. And if you talk uh, from descending order of wins, or sorry, ascending order of wins, uh, Shanghai Dragons is uh, the worst of the bunch here with zero wins. And we have to talk about them first. Yeah. Uh, th thankfully, before we get to play GM, we've gotten to see what they've actually done with the team. And this was what earlier earlier today. Earlier you know, today. Up, you already had the link in the Discord. And I was like, oh. 
They did what I they they did what I thought they would do. Not it not as much as I wanted them to do, but what I thought they would do. Yeah. I did you think all this? Okay, so yeah. uh, let's start with the players because everyone knows and talks about the players, right? So they basically released everyone except for Giguri, Fearless, and Dia. And you'll mention I didn't say Ado in there. And I'm going to ask no, you. Ado, Ado, Ado was released because Ado yeah. came back. No. He was um, he was released. I'm trying to say only the only people that they have active now is Dia, okay. Gaguri, and Fearless. Right. Only people left. Right. So they got rid of Roshan, Igzushu, you know, everyone. Free feel, uh, Alter, Scott, Five like, Kings, Scott, my boys. I feel like Scott had a chance, man. I, I I understand them releasing Sky. I just I really feel as if he never had a chance to shine. And I think the biggest problem with that is the language issue. The only reason for you to play free feel over Sky is because the communication was better. With the performances that Free Feel was putting out, the fact, and I mean, yes, he's a bit of a meme, right? Free food, free feed, whatever you want to call it. The guy was terrible. And the only reason you would play something like that is just literally because he can communicate with the rest of the team, which is what you need at the level at which they're playing. Like, so Sky is, the, I think, the one I'm, I'm most sad about seeing him go because he, he just didn't, he just, he never got the shot, and I think he's a really good support player. I just didn't get to see it. Um, so this was eight of their eleven players that were released. I think. I mean, yeah, we've seen a lot of a lot of players already. Nine, but sorry, between... nine, nine of nine, nine of their twelve, so they're left with one Chinese player and two Korean players. They and here's also... here's what I don't get about that though, Jax. Yeah. Right? Like they keep Dia the DPS role, right? And we had. Serious <clears throat> questions about his Widowmaker play, and then they get rid of Ado, the other D DPS player, who when I mean, I granted, say, yeah. you know, like he wasn't at maybe as impactful as Saya player was, but you know, was he worse than Dia? Um, Ado, I think he tweeted today. I don't have it, his exact words, but it's something along the lines of, "I want to make them regret doing this." You know, so it goes to show you how he feels about the situation. Um, when I said earlier that Shanghai did what I expected them to do, but that they didn't go as far as I wanted them to go, Dia needs to go. Um, he he had his he had his, he had his moments. I again take you back to stage four against the Florida Mayhem, watch point Gibraltar, match point for them, where in three rounds of watch point, you know, attack, defense, attack, in three rounds, he had one kill as Widowmaker. One kill as Widowmaker. That's inexcusable. I you go to the tiebreaker map, which was um, Nepal. They went to the final map, which was the Sanctum, and he was absolutely destroyed in the Widow fight. I yeah. need, if if as general manager, I need players Leplos who will step up in the big moments when the game is on the line. When we have lost thirty nine or I forget whatever number it was at the time, thirty eight games. When we have lost thirty eight games. And the win is right here in front of us, where we're not coming from behind the win. We're in the pole position here. And you can get one kill in three rounds? You got to go. Yeah, I it's can't believe they're keeping him and not not Edo. You know. uh, that said, Shanghai Dragons also doing a little bit of front office moves with the release yeah. of their coach Kong in Nai 8. Uh, I don't know how to the pronounce analyst. it properly. The analyst who were... Under a bit of fire already, they're also released as part of this move. I am not surprised by that one bit, and I, in fact, I'm surprised that they lasted as long as they did. Uh, I with, mean, you, with you their say results, that, but if you take a look at their team page on Liquipedia, they've had they had uh, let's see, U4 in March, U4 steps down as head coach, Kongwa act as yep. standing head coach. Um, it was May 9th. They lost an assistant coach, uh, RUI, for health issues. And not not just that, but when you ask me, you know, in some in some circumstances, would you also release a general manager? I mean, yes, unless I would. He's, this you know, team, un, un, unless he's family to the owners, I would release the general manager, whoever was in charge of running this team, because the head coach, you know, sure, fire the coach because the results weren't there. There were staffing problems, Lepolos. There were what three weeks, if not a full month, where they had no translator. For a team that was half Chinese and half Korean. 
And to mix that in, they were also trying to call in English at some point for whatever reason that I don't understand. Yeah, because they were trying to find somewhere where they had common ground. Sadly, I guess that's English. And I do mean sadly there that they were finding such difficulty in communicating. It looks like their manager is is Van. I, I, I could be wrong about that. That I'm going off of the Wikipedia page. And they've been pretty quick Wait uh, recently with I'm all these changes. I'm looking at this. Are you... Expl- Lepolos, they've got... Why is the man the operations director is American? I, Everybody else on staff is Chinese. Everyone else. And may, maybe the operations manager is the one trying to do the day to day stuff right now, Jax, in terms of coordinate okay. with uh, the stuff in the U.S. and and their their sort of daily schedule and not necessarily team oriented stuff. Let me ask you this: so as it is, no coach, no analyst, probably no manager. You've kept one Chinese player, two Korean players. You're a team Shanghai. By them keeping this, Lepolos, that means they're positioning themselves to once again go into season two with a language problem. Do you, uh, are, do you, do you think that's wise? Like, is that, is that the way to go about it? Like, language being one of their biggest issues? Um, not just that, but if your team Shanghai, and I've asked you this before, season two will be played in Burbank. All of season two will be played in Burbank, except for the playoffs where they might go back to New York or go wherever they want. If you're not going to play any games in Shanghai, do you need a team of Chinese players? Since you know, hey, we're not. We're, they don't really, you know, they don't, they, they don't see us. You know, they're not going to be live. Yeah. You know, we can get away with playing non Chinese players. I mean, I, I think they've they've had a de- decent following. It's hard to hard to tell because of the the numbers um, of viewership. I mean, underdogs, right? The, the people love a good underdog story. So you know, they yeah, have Western viewers, but. Well, I mean, that's something different, plus, like, the first female player in Overwatch League as well, so that keeps Western involvement, and I think that will continue. Um, Dax, uh, just need you to speak for a second here on okay. uh, on, on on that. Oh, okay, uh, no problem. I mean, for, for me personally, I, I, I get wanting to represent the region that you're representing, but at this point, you need wings. You need... An actual, you need an actual win. Yeah, that I mean, that's that's absolutely true, and um, I definitely uh, think, <laughs> you know, there's there's talent that they can pull from in China, but I'm not sure if it's Overwatch League talent, Jax. That's my biggest concern. And when you look at mm, some reports coming out that maybe China, okay, there's like I believe today or yesterday, uh, there was a quote-unquote leak or something that there might be multiple cities in china i i i, I can't remember who it was he's had some questionable, questionable I, remember, uh, I, I pasted it that one i believe was a troll i yeah, do i mean I, there's I do gonna think be so a too. second one in the city i can't pronounce uh, uh so, Gang, yeah. yeah uh so you know if you have two teams competing to try and get uh sort of maybe a national sentiment of chinese players playing on their team and stir up regional interest that way that's not a good situation for an existing team to try and compete against uh against to try and pull from the same talent pull if that makes sense because now you're going to have two teams trying to compete for the best out of the chinese performance maybe or players rather and that's going to end up in a situation where i don't think either of these two teams are going to be in a good place if that's the attitude that they take Right. Maybe, maybe who knows, Jax? Maybe they'll one of the teams will pick up Lucky Features and if that great I mean, Chinese was, team was, <laughs> from Contenders there China. There was a report today from I think it was Halo of Thoughts on that I saw on Reddit that you know, redirected to a Twitter page where he said uh, maybe it was Halo. I forget, but he was saying LGD. Some players from LGD are no, actually it wasn't Halo. It was some random person uh, who was saying that players from LGD were going to be picked up for the Gwang Zhao's uh, team. I, I, I mean, the problem that I have with that, and if, if that's true, you're setting yourself, the, the ownership is setting themselves up to be the next Shanghai Dragons. Because you take a look at LGD Gaming, the best Chinese team in China. Actually, I can't even say that um, because they're not considering what happened to the Land Story Cup this week. But one of the better teams in China. And they were unable to beat Lucky Futures in. So if you're not the best team in your region, region, which is China, and let's be real here, 
China, the Chinese region is not even one of the strongest regions, right? You go to Korea, North America, Europe. I would actually like to see Brazil Gaming House versus Lucky Future Zenith just so that I could gauge the strength of the regions between South America and China. But, you know, it's it's just... Man, it's still a dream. Um, it's still a dream that like we have that we might be able to finally get this this team that's been floating around in the well it was oceanic and now it's a Chinese scene back into action against some Korean teams to see where they right. actually place that. But you know that's not happening. I will almost feel bad, Jax, if they end up getting p- picked up by an Overwatch League team without ever being tested on in that kind I, of way, I, I, because that will just verify to many teams coming out that they that this is a tactic or a strategy that you can take with your team, like go through Oceanic and go through the Chinese scene and get your way up that way. I I don't know. I think the fact that they haven't tested themselves in you know bigger waters with more dangerous fish. They they'll, they'll they'll get poached right. They'll lose Erster, DBS probably yep. get picked up by a different team. The whole team I I just I don't see anyone taking that kind of chance. And I'm looking at all of the te- like say we get six expansion teams right. I don't I don't could I take that chance of picking up an entire roster? I don't know, man. Like as much as I love Runaway, as much as people talk about Runaway needing to be picked up if there's a second Korean team, say for Busan, it's like I Do you trust don't them at the next level when they struggled? Be- uh, yeah. Because right, I I look at Runaway and while they did win contenders, they struggled, right? It it it, it went 7. It was a it was a serious battle here. And you're saying, you know, if you sign this roster, you're picking this team to win. You're not picking them just because they're good and they might have good results in Overwatch League. You want a team that is going to win. Otherwise, why are you bothering? And at that point, you say, is Runaway good enough to win the Overwatch League? You say, no. Well, then what do you do? You have to bring in outside players. Now, you're interfering with the team dynamic that Runaway has built over the last few years. And soon enough, you're looking at it you say, wait a minute. This isn't even Runaways anymore. Yeah, So. I- I think it's, I think that's a pretty good accurate description of what's happening with that team. Uh, let's let's bring this back around though. If you're cool. Dragons, if you're Shanghai Dragons, which is where this started, you're sort of like I don't think they're going to bring in uh, Runaways for sure. No. I, I don't see any existing team right now bringing in one whole f- one full team to replace them. Um, but maybe there's one example that will come up to you, and I'm going to segue into that because that's the second one. But in terms of Shanghai Dragons. I'm concerned about their season two prospect, particularly if they continue on with the same management and a focus on trying to get Chinese players into it. Which, I, to their credit, they didn't show. But when they they hired uh, Fearless Ado and Gaguri in the first place, so okay. We'll my see. last my, my my last thing about Shanghai because I just noticed we're spending a whole lot of time on the team. And to be honest, they they kind of need it. Would you? Could it be that D is going to be their quote unquote token Chinese player levels, where they're going to bring in? other korean talent and then they kept dia because he's you know the best of the best for the for 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 china and they want to have some kind of representation of the city the country that you know that they signed on for um yeah is, i, I think I, what they're doing and that that could be something that they do i mean it could be that dia got along with everyone and and has a better ability to communicate well with the koreans than some of the other players did it, it's it's hard to know because sometimes there's stuff that happens on a team outside of what we see in game and our comments on their skills in game that allows these people to retain uh, stats. And, and to the credit of Dia, like it's not like he was a horrible player. Is this uh, he's not a clutch player? And uh, on that team, they needed a little bit more from him. And any time that that I mean, was okay. needed, it, it he fell apart. If I if if I'm being completely honest with you, if we're adding in, uh, I think we we have fully confirmed two teams, soft confirmed four teams, rumored six teams. If you're bringing in six new teams, levelos, you know, I think Dia is is good enough to fit in an Overwatch League with 18 teams. I think he is good enough for that. If you're sticking with 12, then Dia is good as a bench player to you know run for internal scrims. For, you know, at times, you know, just to switch it up because you just need an injection of new blood, new new creativity. 
So okay, this one, yeah. you, this one you bring in the or you bring in Ado, who's no longer there. But like, actually, can I ask you that question right there yeah. about Ado? Then, like, you know, if you're keeping, if you're keeping Dia, and drop Dia for sure. I mean, yeah. levels. Okay, my, okay. My, okay, well, before, okay, so my, my absolute final thought on Shanghai Dragons. I all keep right. Gajiri, Fearless, and Ado. I build an all Korean roster for season two. While keep in mind, while Epilos, I use my contenders team, Team CC, and I. I flat out buy LGD Gaming or I buy TIW, T, T, T1W, and I make that the team I'm building for season three when we're all going to be in our regional areas having local games. So I, like for season two, I like that. I'm all Korean. That's all right. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to the second worst team, Jackson. When I said there may not be uh, any team that replaces their whole roster with a full team. This other team might be the team to do that. I am talking about Florida Mayhem, Jax. Uh, any news coming out of Florida away so far from them? Um, The owner, I'm I'm actually going to the Discord right now to try to find it. The owner, his name is Ben Spoon, I think. Wow, well, yeah, I that, saw that's, where I was that's asking for translation for something that's coming up later. He said news is he says news. Oh, here it is. Stay tuned at Florida Mayhem fans. We have we will have a bunch of roster news to announce this week, including re-signings, waivings, as well as a big acquisition. That sounds singular to me. Our team has been hard at work creating the strongest possible team for season two. So that this is all that we have heard out of the Florida Mayhem team. Now, Florida is the team at the start, the only ones who came in with just six players. They kept the old Misfits roster. Uh, and they kept the coaching staff, and they felt that that was good enough for Overwatch League. It obviously wasn't, considering we're talking about them as the second worst team in the league. Uh, during the season, they made acquisitions. You know, awesome guy, side player, Zappis, huge. But head coach Mineral had to take a step back because of his personal reasons. Uh, they had an assistant coach, Ryder. They had an analyst, yeah. And so now, here we are, general managers, for, for for the Florida Mayhem. First of all, who do you keep as, as a player, Lepilos? Tivi, Logics, Manitin, Swoosh, Zebasai, Zuppi, Zappis, Saya Player, Awesome Guy. Okay, so here's the deal. Saya Player, 100%, you, you keep unless you can get a trade for multiple good players. And, and when I say multiple good players, for Saya Player, you want one of the best tanks out there in the league that you can get yeah. that's willing to play on your team. If you can do a trade where you get one awesome tank, maybe a flex tank or a support that is a good player, you take that trade for Saya player because that is your largest weakness on um, on the team right now. Uh, yeah, you'd you'd want a top tier tank first and foremost. Like awesome guy, I'm sorry, I'm not. I, I might let awesome guy go, but uh, considering that there's going to be a link a lack of good tank players, you want to shore up what that is, and if you can't do that. You need to retain the people that are somewhat decent. And Awesome Guy was okay. You know? I mean, but see, you say that, right? But he, Awesome Guy came in to replace Swoosh on the main tank. Swoosh, who though, or was or when we first saw him, was a DPS player who switched over to play main tank. Yeah. So he can flex. You know, that that's always, that's not bad. Having a player who can flex. Because you look at a quote-unquote support player like Baguette. And LOL, she's not really a support. She's a frontline bruiser. Um, brawler. And you know, okay, wait. You think okay, I, I can move someone like that over to, to 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 play a hero like that. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I think for me, I'm keeping Saya player. Oh wait, that, I actually cut you off. You didn't finish. You said yeah, keeping Saya player unless you can trade him for two. Unless, unless you can trade him. Uh, the the support players though, right? Like maybe 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 yeah. let's start it this way. Um, support players. I can't see myself keeping keeping any of these guys. Besides Zappe, Zappis, if you want to talk about, he's not he's support. Zappis he's flex, is like but, off tank slash yeah he's a, yeah he, right. He, he sort of filled roles and and didn't didn't do too much either. I'd let go of him. I mean, you know, we had the three Zs in there or three Zs, I guess, yeah. for your American folk. Um, yeah, I'd let all three Zs go uh, there. Manitin, I'd probably think about keeping if I can't find a good flex uh, spot there. Swoosh. Uh, I'm not I'm not up on Swoosh either. I'd, I'd probably try and let him go if I could find another tank uh, for that. Logics to Veek, I think they're good if you can find a better DPS. But again, you're competing against new teams and other teams also. And those players also were decent. To Veek particularly has some great flex potential to fill, uh, fill a role. Jax, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, comment in what, you, what you're thinking. Definitely. So I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and 
the title of the episode is You're Fired. So Zebicide, Zeppi, Zappis. Awesome I mean, it's, it's like a Dr. Seuss rhyme right there, yeah, I feel. Oh, yeah. like okay. when you, As you said, the three Zs are gone. Zappis, I kind of feel like he got a raw deal. We saw him play in, what, two, maybe three games? I think it was two games. Uh, and that was just because they put him in on, on the Hollywood map in one stage because they're like, listen, nothing we have works. So we're just going to put Zappis in because it's different. So sad to say he's got to go. Awesome guy. See you later. Swoosh, see you later. The one I'm hey. not sure of is Logics. Now, I keep side player, as you said. He can play any hit scan you want. I'm pretty sure you can flex to something other than hit scan. But if you need hit scan, I'm looking at you, side player. Especially for the Widowmaker, who, you know, doesn't. I don't think Widow's going anywhere anytime soon. Tavik is still one of the best flex players in the league. There's a drop off from Tavik of old. That I say old, even though it was what, two years ago in Atlantic Showdown, around the time where he just completely popped off for Rogue. Yeah. I mean, but it's just. I would keep Tavik. I would keep Sia Player. I would keep Manhattan just because, believe it or not, good Roadhogs are hard to find. You'll say Roadhog is very easy to play. He's not very easy to play. Positioning, not Particularly at all Overwatch the time. League like, level Manhattan is a really good Roadhog. His off tank is a really good. And I, I, I think. If you put him with a main tank who is better than what he's currently had, then Manhattan could shine a little bit. So I'm keeping Tavik, side player, Manhattan, Logics. He could I mean, be. I think he. I think you keep him and you try and trade him. If not, you hold on to him for a year. Yeah. That I, mean, I, I think that's a that's like my feelings on him too. It's very sort of in between. You, you like he's a trade, great player. You say trade, but we've been seeing a lot of. I mean, we're gonna get to it. There was one player who was just flat out released today. Who at one point was considered one of the best TPS players in the game. I, I mean, like, I, if, if he's just released, then I, I, like, I fail to see who's going to replace. Well, particularly with expansion teams, and also unconfirmed how many expansion teams coming in. I think they might be undervaluing some of their own team, the their own players. Logics is there are times where if you're a widow player or just anyone in general, you're not feeling it, right? Like we saw it at times where uh, team Finley. At 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 Incheon, right? Yeah. Taimu and uh, Linkser were sw- like the widow was flipping back and forth, and we're just saying, "What's going on here? Why are they doing this?" It's just you know, Taimu's like, "I'm just not feeling it." So okay, we got Linkser. You can play it. If you ever get to a point where a player goes cold, and it happens, right? It just it's, it's just a fact. No one can be hot and ready all the time. Logics is fantastic for that. Not not just that levels. I I think I might have been too quick because I don't know how good side players Tracer is. She may not be go to right now, but for the first two years, Tracer was viable in every composition that was, you know, in yeah. every composition. It that dominated the first three stages of Overwatch League as well. So I actually think I'm a little too quick getting real logics because he's a pretty good Tracer. So looking at it, Saya player, Manitin, Logics, and Tabik can stay. The rest can go. I'm sorry, Mineral, head coach. I hope whatever health issues he's had have been resolved. You gotta go. I don't know enough about writer or analyst, yeah, but you know, hopefully the GMs who have been there full time do know enough and can determine whether or not, or perhaps the new coach you you the new coach that you hire will whoever in, that will is have his own backroom staff who might and be that big acquisition they're talking about, Jax. Which the coach? You, I mean, interesting. Right? You might be because they said they said after after the signings, then they said a big acquisition. Yeah. So. Um, concerning everything, uh, what I'm hinting at here, Jax, I'm just going to cut to the chase here, uh, because we won't talk about this team until, until the very end. New York Excelsior let go of uh, their coach, right? Uh, okay, he was a, he was like he was a, he wasn't even the the, the, the coach's Pavane. Like the, oh, the, sorry, the, the analyst. Uh, yeah, he was. Although the way for, one, for the record, fantastic marketing by Wizard Young. Okay, because he probably has multiple people fooled into thinking he is the head coach. Fantastic job by this guy for his own personal brand. He is a wizard, and apparently. Yeah, you know, see, even I've got levels, he was, my head switched. He, he was snatched up a day after he was released. Like, hello, are these players are out here, but no, we want, you know, I guess you want the coach before you want the players because he's got to put the team together. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. But I'm, 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 I'm looking at this. They've got Ben Spoon, the owner. They have a chief gaming officer, they have a West Coast operations officer, and they have a general manager. This team, like, if if you have all this back, you know, backroom staff here, put it together. 
I mean, and I think they they, have they didn't the have the excuse. I mean, they they came in so poor in season one. They don't have this excuse in season two. Luckily, uh, the they last have thing four different people in the back. Why is Tabik driving the bus <laughs> to the stadium if they have all these managers and coaches here? It's a very very good question. I guess the mayhem struck their front office, Jax, but. I'm sorry about that one. I, the good thing about them, though, is they have these three DPS players. And I know, know you said keep them. And the good thing about you saying keep them means that other teams want them too, so you can maybe use them as trade trade uh, negotiations I mean, so far, to shore only, up what the, you need. The, the, the only trades we've seen have been for cash or other incentives that you know we weren't made aware of. Yeah, that's true. Um, we'll see. But maybe you can also leverage them into finding like a better deal on a player that you need. Or something like that in the future too and maybe not in a trade but in a sense when you're negotiating with a player that's coming up to your team so we'll 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 move on though Jax. that was uh florida mayhem they're also getting pretty well uh gutted by by us we move on to another team that was uh, failing this one here man Oof. very interesting i mean we already know one of the biggest players on that team at least yeah. from a viewer standpoint has retired we're talking about dallas fuel seagull they're already retiring one year Jax. was he the first quickest player into retirement uh, not forced um, into retirement. I think he was the first one to take actual retirement. <laughs> right? I, I, oh, oh, okay. I mean, we, we've seen other players retire, but he's the only one that's retiring will probably end up making more money than he uh, did as a player. Dax, uh, I, I think on I that heard... point, I want to say he has a great 401k investment. And by that, I mean 401k <laughs> subs probably at this point. Who knows? It's been going up. It's been going up pretty say, crazy. I was watching his stream and... I think in the last week, Leplos, he picked up something along the line of 12,000 subscribers. So, you know, Twitch subscribers. So, Seagull is not hurting. It, it, it's, it, it actually, hold on, quick, quick time out here. Okay. Seagull, along with other streamers, were a part of this, the Diva Cola Challenge, right? Where you watch and you get sprays. And one day, Seagull had over 100,000 viewers. I'm sitting here watching. So I'm watching other people just, you know, because even though I play, you know, when I log back in, I'll, I'll get my Diva sprays. Why? Since we're in contenders playoff season, Leplos, why would they not give that to contenders? Like, hey, watch this contender stream. Get Diva sprays. Why would you give it to Seagull? Why not contenders? It's right I'm... here. They need an audience. Okay. I... <laughs> I agree with you uh, on that. Uh, I will say, though, I, okay, so I'm going to step step back and tell you what I'm thinking from their marketing department here, which is they clearly want to promote certain Twitch streamers for regular okay. streams, casual streamers, over other streamers that may not have the similar Blizzard family values that they want to promote. <laughs> and okay. at the same time, they haven't gone down the full list of... and. Uh, of streamers there and have, have said you know like oh you know here's this guy that gets like 50 views we're gonna give him it no they're like okay well you know we know these streamers well enough and they're they're pretty positive so we're gonna give them the drops and maybe I mean, not some just, others that have had some you know I, knocks I, I, against I, I, them i was sitting there today watching the south america contenders final had like 2k viewers i think maybe 3k at one point i'm saying blizzard have drops enabled here you know put it on the launcher help this region who has the smallest prize pool who you can regularly screw over, you know, help them out. Path yeah. to pro. It's but sort of crazy though, like because you look at some of the numbers that Seagull got out, and now now you start to wonder about sport, like these esports in general. It's like, is it even worthwhile holding the events when individual viewers can uh, get a lot more to promote your game than putting in all this time and effort and having like I don't know what we're not talking about the All Star Game with the the caster. Caster stuff, but like you put all that effort into all that kind of stuff, and you you still struggle for the same type of views that you're getting on uh, from regular would, I, players streaming. It's, it's funny you say that. The biggest game in the world right now is Fortnite. They're they're having their their big 1.5 million uh, Pax West Summer Skirmish finale is going on this week. I, I think the final is tomorrow. I was watching a qualifier, uh, literally an hour before we started streaming. The official Fortnite stream at one point had 103,000 viewers. And then I turned and I looked at Ninja, who was like rebroadcasting it and talking. He had 100,000 himself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like 103 for Fortnite and 100 for Ninja specifically. So, I'm, you know, just there you go. I, I, I agree with you. I, and I think what we're learning in this new new age to a, to a degree is that uh, production values doesn't mean 
is it's the same level level of quality of viewerships that you're going to get you know people are looking for uh, i believe what are the, what are they saying these days authentic no that was like 2014 i'm sorry i don't know i don't know the 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 genuine term to to really say that but what i'm trying sorry, to say dallas fuel dallas fuel we're we're, we're 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 falling even further behind we are i haven't seen our clock guy we with are clock all right. night so we're looking i mean just quick look at the organization I, i'm looking to have owner co-owner co-owner general manager player manager head coach and three assistant coaches so staff it looks like they've got well staff they brought on staff well okay not only was arrow hired into the fourth year i believe right or sorry fourth stage at that time if i remember correctly right they they have since announced that jane and tickety or a Uh, have also been hired on to assistant coach. I love the staff acquisitions. Uh, you they... love them because they're Canadian. You're not fooling me, Lepolos. I... <laughs> you love them because those two guys are Canadian. I, you're not. You're not wrong. You know, can, Canadians <laughs> here coming in for the Dallas Fuel. I, I understand that that might be a little bit of bias. You know, you had your LA Gladiators. Okay, I'm not going to have Sorry. Dallas Fuel uh, bias here. Let's go through the roster about who yeah. I would and wouldn't keep. Man. I, I listen. This is going to be trouble. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a big one, Jax. I am not keeping effect. Oh, <laughs> I um, knew that's going to be an issue. Here's my problem with effect at this point uh, from your team. I look to try and trade him, but he is uh, like his personal issues aside. And I, would, I, I as a as a person that cares, I would try and make sure he's supported in some kind of way. But I don't think he's ready to perform on your team again with the issues that he showed in starting from stage oh, one man. on the stage. Um, uh, I don't think he's ready to be in that kind of role. It's certainly not with your team right now with how right, okay. mixed in right performance this you moment, are. I, oh, sorry. I, 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 I was going to, no, I forget. This is only one player. You have to go through the whole roster then now. Okay. Well, That's I wanted, I wanted to start I'm on that one right though. Now. You're dropping effect. I am sick. Wow. I, okay. You Continue. see, I think, Continue. I think that's the biggest one. Uh, from there, there's some things that, um, like it's still hard because when you talk about dropping like every player, you know, like who do you keep? Okay. Who do I keep? OG, I'd probably keep. He, he did fairly well on the, ta- the main tank position. I think main tanks are going to be hard to find of the same caliber. If you really some Unko, I think you keep, you need a really good, uh, support player that is consistent. I think he's your best support player. Uh, I think you release chips hand and Harry hook. And I know Harry hook has been doing the shot calling. You give I'm sorry. Up Harry. Oh. I think Carrie has to go. I do. I do. I I think he has to go. I think AKM has to go. I think Coco has to go. And I think you you keep... uh, So, OG, Unko, you definitely keep... uh, I think you keep Mickey around for the sportsmanship, but not necessarily a main main player all the time. And I am on the fence about Taimu. I think you keep him, though, and you work on him uh, because I think he has a lot of value he can offer uh if if he gets proper coaching about that uh, now the harry hook thing i think i think he could stick around but he really didn't have a great season one and i don't think he needs to be your shot caller and so maybe maybe i put an asterisk beside him if you can pick up a better shot caller than him uh then you should do that particularly the issue i have with their support lineup is usually it seems like the shot callers go to support right, right. and you have harry hook in Unko that we're competing with, I believe you need to keep Unko, and that Harry Hook needs to either improve his shot calling, which was poor in season one, or you replace him. And that's what I'm saying: probably replace him for season two with somebody that is a better shot caller. Now that you're Lepo retooling the team, hot fire right now, guys. Uh, I, I I admit I I don't cut it back not yet. Um, I'm I'm gonna keep him. Uh, so they've gotten him. I, I think the, their biggest mistake in, as an organization. Well, okay, I get it. He said he had to go, and they let him go, and it just feels as if I won't say they forgot about him, but they just let him go and weren't checking in on him because you know we yeah. went through it throughout the season. We kept getting these updates from him that were getting worse and worse. And then Arrow was head coach. It gets to the really bad point where you know it was him and his, his girlfriend were both. This is effective talking about. We're having issues. And then I think on one of our episodes, we said, listen, Dallas, send somebody over there, talk to him. They did the reverse. They said, effect, you come back to us. And Arrow on his stream was like, yeah, I've got effect here. I'm working with him. And that's what I like to see. So I'm or if the season started next week, then even then, I don't think I release effect. One of the things that we have to remember um, is Overwatch League teams are granted two spots 
for two-way contracts. You can have a player who's on your Overwatch League team and also on your Contenders team. If the season were to start right now, I would give effect to one of those slots. Because I, even though he might not be Overwatch League ready, you got to work him back into it. So, you know, that's one of the benefits of having an academy team. And I guess it's something that we, I mean, yeah, know, we, I can... we, we, we probably could have considered for the first two teams that just slipped my mind. But honestly, no, because the people who were cut on Shanghai and Florida, you're, I don't even want you on a, on, on a two-way. I want you gone. Um, so I would probably slap effect with the two-way contract. From there, I'm keeping Unko, same as you. I'm keeping OGE, same as you. AKM, you got to go. I I was one of the advocates for AKM in Overwatch League. I think he has the potential to still be an Overwatch League DPS player. Even with the 12, man, 12 teams we have right now, if it expands to you know, 14, 16, 18, depending on the number of expansion teams, I st- of course, AKM has a slot when it comes to being a, a DPS on one of 18 Overwatch League teams. Dallas, not a fit. Now, in the offseason, if he's figuring it out, if Dallas as a whole is going to retool and make this work, then okay. But as of right now, AKM, you're gone. Chipsogen, I like you. You're gone. Coco, we're never going to figure out what the hell happened with you, but you're gone. Unsolved mystery right there, Jax. I mean, <laughs> you know, X-File kind of, kind of level stuff right now. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it's it's just strange, dude. Like when you yeah. Lepolos, when it comes to the point where Taimu is running Winston or Taimu had to go to the crapper, which so we move Mickey over to Winston and then Seagull is gonna play off tank because Taimu has to go to the bathroom. Meanwhile, Coco is just sitting there doing something. I'm like, really? It's that bad with Coco? And so like, the question he, I have he, to he, ask he, you as a joke here. Do you think he showed up to the arena or do you think he stayed back? I, think, I, I mean under Coach Kaikai, I don't know. Under Coach Arrow, because Arrow was specifically asked about this during the whole Fisher debacle, he says, I have my players here. I want them here. I want them involved. It's a team, Lepolos. You want your players involved. On game day, you want your team, everyone, in the same spot, man. You don't yeah. want someone back at the crib watching, be like, uh, Uber or Postmates, bring some food over. I'm watching this game. You want him there, supporting, learning. So- Engage. For the most, for the most part, you and I agree with. Oh, okay. So uh, I didn't I mean, let you finish here. Harry Hook uh, chips. Like, I, chips is gone. Okay. I, 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 I like Harry Hook. Do you understand my point about the the I shot do. calling though, right? I, and I mean, and I, in particular, I, 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 his role on support, or I like, do you a keep communication problem for Dallas overall? Oh, and yeah, I agree with you. you. How about this? So I, mean, I, I could make an is... asterisk here, it, Jax. Yeah. Uh, Harry Hook third third support thought. I, could, I know I could I could take that and yeah, so honestly I. if I'm Harry I'm worried because as 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 me as as general manager I've been watching a lot of contenders there and Lucio there are a lot of good Lucio stuff below us. Yeah. there are a lot of good off not not main support off support players and some of them are hungry like really hungry and I think Harry Hook might might be in trouble here we'll see we'll see Mickey I like Mickey nice guy uh, his baguette play was pretty good. Pretty good back at play, but I think his starting spot is gone. Plus, I keep. I agree. As with you that. said, you keep him in the team for camaraderie, for oh. for for what he brings to the whole team dynamic. But his his main his secure play spot. Work, yeah, you know. I, I his, do have to say, Jack. So, like again, I think we're coming into an issue where we might run out of tanks, in which case you might want to keep him around to have as a tank you see, player. This is something else that I was wondering about. Is you and I were cutting all these players. It's like. Where are we gonna find all these replacements? Um, yeah, it's a very know, good question, teams, particularly when you watch the scene, the the I contender mean, level, scene. You're like, teams hmm. have to have a minimum of eight players. If you look at Shanghai, as right now, they have three, so they have to bring in five. You're gonna want more than that, but you know, at a minimum, they have to bring in five players. And you're like, holy crap! So now, looking at Dallas, I'm keeping Mickey. I think he has to fight for his spot on stage. It is not secure at all. Uh, Taimu. I wish there was a way to keep Taimu consistent. Like he is all over the place. But since I've yeah. already cut AKM, I don't think I can cut Taimu as well. Uh, but Taimu has got a lot to show, man. Like it, it, I'm looking at the World Cup play and how he plays in their games. If we have scrims or practices, you know, where we're trying out other players, I need to see how he works. With, uh, I, honestly, Taimu's fighting for a spot. He's he's got it as of as of the day. Taimu's got his spot. 
but it's September, and Overwatch League doesn't start till January. Time will you're not safe, man. You got to fight for it, but you got a paycheck for right now. That's about the best I can do for him. Sounds good, Jax. Let's go ahead and move on, though. Next team on the chopping block, maybe, as we should call it. I don't know. Uh, we are talking about San Francisco Shock now. This team, Jax, had a slow start to the season, or remained yeah. sort of towards the bottom of the standings, and I think that might have been unfair come that, that final stage where Krusty came in as head coach. Their dive looked like, like it improved, but that was in a non-dive This meta. team was originally put together for the second half of the season. I... You know, head coach Brad, uh, what's his name? Sefi Brad. I forget what his, I think his, his gaming name is Sefi. Formerly the uh, well, head coach. Remember. Yeah, he was he was he head was coach. He was the, well, no, Brad, was, Brad, uh, Brad. That's who it was. He was the owner of yeah. Selfies. Okay, yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of get them letting him go. I don't really like, I understand you're building for a future here, but there is still a here and a now. And the San Francisco Shock has started the league for terrible you know but they got super they got 150k in you know then they started bringing in uh signings architect fantastic choyo bin they brought in moth you know pretty good signings i would say on. actually jacks like i i didn't mind those i mean they've yeah. they have let go of three people so far in total right they've let go of idd qd nomi and doc have all moved yeah. on no surprise so i i agree with those moves right off the start here and when i look at what's remaining in their their roster I actually like it like i like their roster um the biggest issue i remain that remains with their roster is the lack of a strong and primary flex tank uh, that was that can communicate well joy hoping is the hope there hopefully by season two he can uh meld into the team a bit better than he did uh at the end of season one so if he can do that I'd, i'm not sure if there's any major changes that i would make to this this I'm, roster I'm looking right at now. this team. Like the, he was building for the future. When they when they brought in these signings, they were. I mean, this team is. If you were talking about a team that didn't make the playoffs, and you you know we're saying they're still. I think they're ready to. I'm not. I think they're they're pretty damn close to being ready to go for season two here. Baby Bay, Dante, Sinatra on your DPS with Architect. I. That there's still some overlap here with, with with some of their players, like between uh, yeah between Dante and Sinatra, a little yeah, bit Dante of Dante and Sinatra, yeah, and Except, to a degree, I mean, Navix and Architect. Not get rid of Sinatra. Sinatra, no, I would say he's the face of the franchise, but he might be Dante. I think I think Dante got a raw deal come towards the end of the season where we saw less of Dante, we saw more Sinatra, more Architect. But Dante, you talk about players who improved throughout the season from stage one. To when he kind of disappeared, not 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 that he he stopped. It wasn't him; it was the coaching staff who disappeared yeah. him. But Dante made huge improvements. His song yeah. was considered one of the best in the league. His tracer and, play improved leaps and bounds. And I don't think you can remove him. I think their weakness remains tanks position. And th so, if I'm talking about removing anybody on this team right here, right now, it would be Nevix. You're my boy. Ah, my boy. I love. Nevix. I love. I love Nevix, but like, I feel like he was a better tank. Or sorry, yeah. Uh, support role than he was in that flex the, the fact tank that, look, role. The fact that you can say that, that we can say he has played support DPS and tank at the highest level. His his flex his flex skill is huge, man. It is. And, and, and there are teams that I think will value him much more than Shock, and I think they should look to trade to those teams for a a second good flex support uh, look, look, flex tank role. just finished talking about? Nevix is Dallas Fuel. Then send Netflix to the Dallas Fuel for, um, you got nothing for what? Yeah, I you, you, like who's who's Dallas going to send them? Open up the, open up the check yeah, you might you might trade it for check. cash, honestly, and yeah. that's not that's not a knock against Netflix. Like Netflix should have a, a starting role somewhere in the league, in my opinion, or maybe if not starting, at least another key one. And when I look at when I look at uh, San Francisco's roster, he's competing with, uh. It's going to be a hard team, but you know that said, if they are really tight and they have a good uh, team team environment with him there, and he fits in well with that, I think you keep him, right? And that I don't know because so, I'm not involved with their team. So if we let Nevix go, are you then saying you don't want to bring anybody else in? You you, you want to bring another off tank? I think you said you want to bring an off tank. Um, yeah, because like the, that's the weakest weakest link. Particularly right. if you end up running goats, right? Like your your goat composition right now would be reliant on 
super great you know that's great so um, as soon as he can coordinate with the team that's great too then you have baby bay sinatra yeah he's a, sinatra well Bizarre. sinatra or baby bay right. there right like we have seen baby bay fill that yeah yeah um, too so he, like he, yeah he, that he sort of works that, yeah. Yeah, it sort of works. So, I so mean, you might be able to get there, but you also you still want to have people who can fill roles if you have sickness or something like that. So you I do like want a, another a tank main. Like uh, I like Sleepy. I don't really have much. I might criticize a little bit, but I'm perfectly fine with where he's at. Moth, you know, we're seeing Mercy take a, a couple hits. I think you know she'll still be played because it's Mercy and she still has a revive. It's just, I look at Moth, and while he is an improvement over what they were running, I'm just, I have a question mark next to him. I'm not sure. I would like him to bring in a support. Um, yeah. So, in other words, we don't have, like, a lot of people we're, we're cutting here. I bring in one off tank and one support, but even now, yeah, I can though, see that. You, need, you have no backup main tank, now that I think about it. Yeah, like, they have a DPS overload, and that's why I think you you might want to trade a, one of your DPS players, again, for a tank. And this is a common theme that you're going to hear me say, I think, throughout, is the, the lack of tank players. And, Jax, I'm yeah. going to move us on quickly, Go for it. because we have another team releasing a tank player. When we talk about the next team, it's, oh. of course... Oh. Soul Dynasty here. releasing a number of players. When was that? That was uh, just a couple of days ago, I believe it was, uh, where they they uh, didn't th didn't I read that where they're releasing Zumba or sorry not Zumba that, the, Miro. This was today, my man. Like I yeah, it was today. Twitter, two hours ago, Soul Dynasty would like to thank Miro, Guido, and Wikid for their services during the season. It's Guido, Wikid, no surprise. Miro, though, wow, we Zumbo, would not have been Miro able to predict surprise. this one. You were the First person out of everyone to say, Miro, you gotta go. I remember. I, I called you out on it. I did. It. Here it is. I did. I did say that. You're. You are absolutely right, Jax. Leplos, for those, I'm serious, people. Leplos was the first person who, who actually. It's. I mean, everybody was thinking it, but he was the one who said, Miro, you're done. I mean, you you look at his play. You look at the falter in his play. It, it happened early in the season, and then it didn't get better. And that's a, that's a good sign that that, that player I, is there, gonna there, have trouble. There, there was a thread. That kind of talked about this, and they were saying Miro didn't get worse. Everybody, all these other main tanks got better, and he didn't. Leplos, like I'm, I'm, I'm saying the game. There's an element of truth in that. But a lot of these tanks, you know, we're just seeing massive improvements there. And if you take a look at Miro, it's just, come on, it's, he's not, he's not playing, he's not playing worse. It's just everybody else is playing better. Teams are positioning better to deal with the Winston, and you know, it's like, wow, yep. but. I mean, I mean, that's the same thing about the meta shifts and why some teams can't handle those when other other ones can. Like, uh, sometimes you can become mechanically good at one very one one very specific thing, and then once somebody else gets good at what counters that, and yeah. they get good enough mechanically at, at that counter to finally beat you, you can't beat it. And I am looking at say like old uh, NIP with their three hundred three strat back yeah. in 2016 well wow. yeah we're going back there because that, <laughs> that was the original 303 not not like this goat strategy now that I'm we have uh, the year. but anyways so miro guido will keep gone gambler announced his retirement so he's another one who just said he he, he saw the done. seagull route yeah he's staying on the soul dynasty uh streaming team so you know he's still affiliated with the team so that's foregone, but the biggest news, Lepolos, yeah, let's be real, the biggest news here, because you're saying they cut Miro, so they're lacking a main tank. No, they're not. Because the first, one of the earliest news pieces that we had is that they signed Fisher from the Los Angeles Gladiators. So there's your trade for a tank. You know, uh, the Gladiators didn't get any players, so I'm assuming cash or whatever, uh, there's no draft, so there's no draft picks to trade here, but what an act, I mean, personally, I don't care for Fisher anymore after what he did with the Gladiators, but I can't deny his skill as a main tank. And if you go back to season one, their biggest weakness throughout the season might be their main tank, and they appear to have just Jax, built it. Man. I do, I do want to make a comment here. What I, what I think Dynasty gave Gladiators was that that birth to the the playoffs in stage four. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> uh, okay, That's a joke. Gonna, That's gonna, a joke. We're gonna throw these games here, Gladiators. You can make the playoffs. But we want Fisher. Fisher in the off season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, fantastic pickup, and you know, it, it's kind of telling Miro gone, but they keep Kuki as of now. They keep Kuki, and you're. I'm, I'm looking at this team, so you know, Guido. I think Guido is another one. Unfortunate circumstances where he was a DPS player who was kind of forced into a support role that didn't really work out. Uh, Wikid, 
You know me, Luffalos. I mean, Monty says they brought him in over Fle- uh, for his defensive junk rap. Like, oh, whatever my goodness, that means, yeah. Okay? Whatever <laughs> we that had weeks of talking about that. Rap, I, I, yeah. I still have yet to figure that out. But Wakid is gone. And so we're we're left we're we're left with a, a tank lineup now. I think strongly upgraded with Fisher. I agree with yeah. you. Zunba and Zephyr in the off tanks. I think still is, strong. Is, okay, one I don't rate Zephyr pretty highly. I mean, I know I, I, I saw. Yeah. Was, I think Gambler said in his retirement statement, or someone I read somewhere in the last week that said they said no one practices more than Zephyr. That's fine. Zephyr can practice all he wants. It's just when he was with Cloud Nine, and then now with the Soul Dynasty, Zephyr doesn't impress me in the off tank position. Not at all. Okay, I'm just I'm just not impressed by Zephyr. So he can go. Like, sorry, pack your bags and go. Maybe go to the new Korean team, or uh, I don't know. It's not it's not my job to know. He's got an agent. Let the agent figure out where Zephyr's going to go, but he's out of here. Um, I like Fisher and Kuki. I, I, I like having a backup main tank. I feel like you have to have one. So if you don't have, if you drop Kuki, then you have to bring in someone else. And as you said, Levelos, we're already dropping main tanks all over this, all, all, all over the place. So there's no real replacement there. The support right. lineup then with Gambler leaving leaves us with Ryu, Jae Hong, and Toby. What happens if Mercy becomes strong meta again? Who's going to play the Mercy? Neither one of them is really good at Mercy, which is hard for me to say. They're good at other things. Yeah. Mercy is not one of them. They absolutely so need a pickup there. Like they absolutely need to get a support pickup in their their team because they are str- like. I mean, I, I know they're the classic duo from way yeah. back of the Lunatic High days. They that remains a weakness for them on their back lines. I mean, I, I also thought Guido and Wakid were not strong players and. Obviously, Fleta when he punched, uh, he he popped off as great. Or Munchkin the same. Uh, I think you first need a support, but uh, clearly at least getting a third DPS that is consistent is a high priority for this team That's, right here, right th- now. This is what I was gonna say. Like right now, I can make do with Zumba. If Zumba's healthy, you know Zumba had those health issues in season one. But if he's if he if he's fixed, if he's ready to go for the entire season, then Zumba is a fantastic off tank. You match him up with Fisher, and that's a front line anybody's going to be worried about. You've got Jay Hong and Toby, who are strong, right? They're strong players, but there are holes in what they in, in, in what they can play. You fill that hole. Fleta, I like Fleta, no problem there. Uh, I think at times he kind of went silent. I don't know if that was because of the team. I, I think it was a team him. thing usually yeah, more than it, it like on him part. specifically. So you know, I'm 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 still what I'm saying is I'm fine with Fleta. Munchkin, he's got that question mark. I. I look if I'm looking for a, a spot to upgrade, I'm going to my second DPS level blows. Um, if he is, so, you what Munchkin is your tracer and your what else? What what else is Munchkin? Like this is the problem. You you can't really say. Fletta can play hit scan. He can play Genji. He can play Fletta is your flex DPS, right? But you want if if Widow player is still a thing, you want Widow unless you find someone who's a better Widow than Fletta. Which good luck. I mean, it, it, people are out there, but yeah, uh, they'll probably be signed. It's so, going to be difficult. I I think the other major DPS, thing. I, I think the biggest holes support sign a support sign a sign a DPS. I, I agree with you. I also think too, it's going to be interesting to see how they perform with their new coaching staff here, where they have KDG and. Changun uh, as yeah. assistant there. I mean, the, that, that was one of the problems. We needed, that, we that, needed to see a change there as well I, from them. I think that's one of the problems we had with them is that they brought in, they kept their old coach from Lunatic High who won all that stuff. They 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 took the GC Busan coach and they brought him in. At that point, you have two literal head coaches and teams are, it just doesn't work, man. I, I mean, we don't know how the coaching worked, but obviously it didn't because they had coaching question marks throughout the entire season they didn't make a single stage playoff levels no stage playoffs no end of season playoffs what so, a disappointment it is like that team is. very very poor showing out of all expectations out of them uh, yeah so let's let's talk about houston outlaws jacks the team just better than them in the standings very slightly did make it to playoffs i believe they even got to finals at one point if i'm not mistaken stage, i think you're right stage was- uh Stage one, I believe. Uh, it, no, stage one was no. London and New York. Stage two, I don't think they made it. I think they didn't they make it. It was it was yeah. it was that that playoff run that they had, yeah. but they then they ended up losing to London. I think in that was yeah okay. I had that wrong. My apologies. But uh, am I reading this right? Is there five DPS players on this team right now? I mean, oh, you're yeah. you're seeing a name that isn't oh, isn't yeah. there according to us, uh, which get, is get clockwork. The, get the firing uh, squad already here. Though. Okay, yeah. So so it's not entirely updated. There's one that we knew there was a leave date already. Factor Fiction is gone, but we also yeah. know that Clockwork, I believe, has is being. Did he? 
Is he being moved on? I'm not sure. I don't remember. There's discussion Muma, about from Muma's stream about yeah, this. So I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think we've heard it officially. Now, of, I, we can say it. You and I both feel clockwork has got to go. Muma yeah. disagrees with me. Muma, uh, Muma said in a clip that I saw today, he said clockwork definitely belongs in Overwatch League. He didn't get to play DPS, which for him was a mind-boggling decision. So you've got Muma questioning why clockwork wasn't played. I think you and I question why clockwork wasn't played at times when they needed a tracer too. and they Absolutely. played jake on well, they, and so. then they bring in our hand i mean you look at the roster right now on the liquidpedia page with clockwork in it let's let's run down the list here Go from best it. to worst dps at least in my opinion here you have linkser you have jake you have our hand you have clockwork you have mendo kusai Ooh. yeah exactly Did you, you have five dps you had um, five. People are DPS. saying Jake, which which we saw at Incheon. Jake is positioning himself, which I, again I don't mind. If, if I, I think he could probably squeeze out another solid paycheck out of the Overwatch League, but he's positioning himself as a as a caster. Fantastic for his own personal brand. Um, Jake, well, I know I saw him selling those T-shirts along <laughs> along with Rockets we'll start there. Start with the T-shirts, please don't. So we're taking a look at the DPS here, which I I, I kind of feel like well I won't say it's the biggest problem. But it's a pretty huge problem here. Uh, clockwork. I mean, you you do have linkser, right? Like you have linkser, so you know He's you know you're keeping. Dude, you you know you you know tracer. you're keeping two. You're keeping two of your DPS, right? If you Are can we, trade clockwork, Mendo Kusai, or our hand, you do that. I suspect they're going to keep our hand. I would not keep our hand. I would have signed him in the first place. Why would I keep him? Okay, so I'm assuming they're going to keep our hand. Uh, you keep Jake, you keep Linkser, and you replace Clockwork and Mendo Kusai. Uh, or, sorry, you get rid of those two. Those two are done. I still believe in their tank lineup of Cool Matt, Spree, and Muma are pretty strong overall. I have issues with their three supports, which I am I not actually particularly impressed too Fact much with them. I, I, I think Fact of Fiction is an incredible tank. But, you know, yes, Muma works best with how they play. But to have a tank like Factor Fiction on your bench, unless he won it out, I yeah. don't cut this guy. Like he's a fantastic tank here. And particularly again, you talk in about a... level, what happens if Muma breaks a toe? Like I remixed it, and now they have no main tank. Yeah, they 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 could be in. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good question. Maybe he didn't fit well with the team. Uh, maybe he didn't uh, want to sell T-shirts, he, Jax. Uh, he played with half the team on Team USA. Okay, okay, n n never mind. But <laughs> I was a little bit. I was okay, little bit okay. Kumet, okay. I, I, you know, I, I love Cool Man. I think he has yeah. work to do. Like he draw. Like if you take a take a look at off tanks, that I'm sorry, I'm looking at Fury, who y'all up below space. Cool Man used to be up there or near them. He's fallen down. Like he's I, I agree. To figure it out. Um, Spree, does he? I, I've seen Spree play. He can play things other than Zarya. It's just his Zarya is really good. So the off tank, I've got a bit of a question. I think, I think, I think there's it's a, a bit of a question there. mark. I agree yeah. with you here, Jax, but I'm going to go back in, into repeating sport. this. The lack, well, well, that yes, on the this DPS team support, but sport. for all teams, tank and flex tank, I think are going to be the hardest positions to fill. Um, and when you have someone that's fitting in with your team and does fairly well, it might be hard to replace them with somebody that's an unknown for season two. So. When it comes to cool Matt, I think you still keep with them and you work, you work, you give extra attention if you're a coach to to that position because it can I mean, clearly work. Just look at Seagull moving over to that and and picking that up pretty well. So I think uh, a proper coaching and proper practice there could hopefully bring cool Matt up to the speed that he needs to be. But it's also team dynamic, and that position is a very team based position. I'm looking so I'm I'm looking for potentially an off tank if, if there's an upgrade to be made. I'm 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 I might take it and drop either Kumat or Spree. I I don't think the although there was a rumor that Kumat was looking to retire, which I I refuse to believe because he hasn't done but... enough to retire. What's he gonna retire for? He's definitely not gonna have the four hundred one k uh sub plan that uh, you know. So okay, so does. You, you've but... got that, but then as you were saying, Boink, Banny, and Rockus in the support. The That's support the biggest weakness. Matt, stage one, pretty good. Two, three, and four, they disappeared, man, to the point that I'm I'm still questioning Rockus being signed over Sleepy for Team USA. We'll find out this week. End. Um, but there's they're fighting for the jobs, Lepolos. Like I'm looking at contenders, I'm looking at the World Cup, and come November, I'm thinking if I haven't seen something 
from these guys, then as much as I like the quote unquote core of the old FNR GFE, I need to bring in some support players here, man. Because support is too important, dude. Yeah. Like, look at B. Dosen. Look at Jay Jonak. Shaz. Like, you have these DPS support players. You do need Ooh. a DPS support player. In fact, when you have so many DPS, maybe you move Clockwork over to Zenyatta. <laughs> Uh, I have I just as one last little, little thing here before we move on to the next I, I've spotted the real problem with the Houston Outlaws. Yeah, they have one coach uh, They have three or three coaches. They lack assistant coaches and they lack okay. assistant assistant coaches, right? I'm Their pyramid is top heavy the, I'm just I'm assuming they they left out the tag here for assistant But I'm gonna take you back to something we talked about very early on when it comes to general managers if I'm flame right now, I'm nervous. I'm not comfortable in my job as zone manager, and I need to make massive plays in the offseason to turn this around. And you want to know why? Because Clockwork, Mendo Kusai, yes, I said his name last time, and Arhan are signings that I made, and they were trash. They were just terrible. Arhan, I'm no sorry. payoff. Yeah, below. They had Zero five the speakers, and then they brought in Arhan, and so the team proceeded to use Korean callouts because he didn't understand English. Yeah, th they, me? they're the feels over reels team. And while they <laughs> did beat out the old lunatic high by the standings, I don't think season two will Love treat them us. kindly if they keep that Mendo kind of an attitude. Up. And see, I wish I hadn't said that because it just pisses me off. This <laughs> guy here, and if you're a Mendo fan, I'm sorry, but your boy is weak, okay? Wow. He mentally wasn't ready to play, then why did he sign the contract? They, I, they were doubles. There were times they were begging for someone to play DPS because they had to run Jake on Trace. Mendo is a good tracer. He is a good. I mean, like when we saw him play, he was he was a good player, and and I understand that there are mental issues when it comes to performance at high levels of all sorts, like whether it's sports doubles, or he played for whatever you do. But he played. <sighs> yeah, okay. I, and I'm not. Okay. I'm not trying to make an excuse here. I'm just trying to say, you know, as a team that's running a business, you don't keep players at the highest level that aren't playing like you you say fireworks? you you give them a chance and if they don't want to take that chance and they're not they're not doing their job and you have to move on so and it can be a positive release like you can be like well you know we liked him but uh it wasn't a good fit and he's not prepared right now for the overwatch league or competitive play like do you so, think he's ready for one of those two-way contracts is he ready to go down to an academy team Jax? actually I, you know that's not a bad idea um if he's having some kind of performance anxiety then that's not i mean look, the guy he's got talent it's just i don't know if I, does he want to be a pro like you take a look at seagull right seagull has talent doesn't want to be a pro player wants to be a streamer that is yeah. perfectly fine just come out and say it dude don't, yeah well don't, you need don't, to don't hear you're collecting a paycheck like seagull you know that's why i said seagull is one of the best I, I i like him for what he has done as a professional he wanted to be a pro so he didn't try to do both right some players they tried to stream all the time and then play pro on the side no seagull went to be a professional Overwatch League player. And he's like, okay, I did it for a season. I'm a streamer now. I'm good with that. If he doesn't want to play, then fine, man. Just say it. Okay. Don't, 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 don't keep stringing this along. Don't. But since we're done with Houston, let me just make sure this is right. We're cutting three DPS players. I wish, I want to cut a support. I just don't know which of the three to cut because I'm not there full time. If I was there full time, I would know who to cut. Probably but, not Banny, in my opinion. So Rockus was such a what happened? It, if you can find, yeah. I mean, actually, you know what? You you have to coach Rockus and see what's going on. Maybe he's doing better scrims and it's not know. showing up right now. But yeah, right I, now from I, the I, looks I, I of don't it, speculate. But I do know he had that rather personal loss, you know, of his yeah. father passing. And I know I lost. I've lost both my parents. I know how that crushed me. And you know, is is it a mental thing with Rockus? It's just I go from stage one. To where Rockus was up there, and then he just now he's just making commercials for a tail, and that's it, dude. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it looks like they're they're putting faith in their, their lineup there, so we'll see if they can turn around. And coaching, coaching will do well, and it's not just all uh, all fun and games because it does look like they're a pretty good team and they have pretty good personalities together. Yeah. Uh, I hope they can transfer that into a level of professionalism and seriousness that we have not seen from at least a few of their players, uh, including some that You're we haven't seen right. play. Uh, because they they still have a lot of potential, we haven't seen it, and that's why I'm always like for that team, except for except for Mendo and Arhan and Clockwork, I am I'm like fifty fifty on cutting. Levels. If after stage one, they're not 
they don't have to make the stage one playoffs, but depending on the format, because we don't even know what Overwatch League format might will be like for season for season two. But if they keep the current Overwatch League format, if they're not say if they don't make stage one playoffs, if they're not fifth or sixth, if they're under the halfway, you know, if they're in the bottom half of the league. I'm making changes to coaching staff at that point because you don't have time to go through and pray for things to turn around. If come stage two, you're still not making any improvements. I'm making trades at that trade deadline. Like you can stick with the core of FNR GFE and you stick with your core team here, but they didn't produce in season one. And I don't really, I don't see how this team is going to do it for season two. It's just that right now, I'm giving them a chance. It's, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Manager, I, you know. I, I can see that. Um, Let's go go ahead and start talking about the teams that did make it to the playoffs. So, Jack, starting with Philadelphia ooh. Fusion, okay. uh, this team, uh, Jacks, they made it to the finals. They they yeah. they came from that sixth spot, all, and made it all the way to the grand finals. And uh, Dude, Chef Coach Heidi producing, and then they go def- to the finals. Yeah, you do not hire Chef Coach. They go to New York. They don't get her a kitchen. No. No produce. She doesn't cook. They eat out. They have food delivered. I suspect and then they that get it was in the finals. It was sous chef Joe Meister who is being released. That through through the co- the the cooking, uh, he forgot oh, to get the groceries there in New York, and then they had to do that. No, I honestly, I'll, I'll stop joking about that because I, I do like Joe Meister as a guy. Obviously, another Canadian, so biased. No, but um. We didn't even see him play he once, didn't play Jax. All, we didn't see him play once. Other releases, so let's go ahead and just move quickly. Dayfly, uh, I think no you're... Surprise. No, no surprise. surprise there. Shadowburn released huge as surprise. well. Huge surprise, Leplos. That one is big. I th- I think he will be picked up by another team. I th- uh, okay, so you, you you remember me saying that in the press conference after they lost the, the finals, I liked how EQO stepped up and was answering the questions, was taking the heat, right? Eh? All of the Koreans were, were silent, even though there was a translator there. They didn't say anything. So the English on spoke of. up. But EQO was the one who was constantly answering questions, bringing the attention onto himself, because that's what you want from a leader. I have no problem with that from EQO. Fantastic that he did that. Yep. I, I, to cut Shadowburn, I get it. Him, EQO, and Shadowburn, the hero pool overlaps far too much. Yeah, I, I mean, Let ideally, this I would I would have not let Shadowburn go immediately unless again it was like a discussion. I definitely would have looked to try and uh, leverage him into a trade for either money or. Uh, I mean, I wish we knew. Honestly, more they, about they need the a support. Here they need a support. Because, right? You no, know, like, if this it, 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 if, if this were like another league where salary cap was the thing, then I would say you know because. Shadowburn being the name that he is when the when the league started, you know he's paid, right? You know, I mean, Carpe, I believe, was the highest paid in season one at one hundred eighty thousand. This was heavily rumored, but I have no, you know, I so you've got Carpe already making a lot. I'm pretty sure Shadowburn got paid as well because he was Shadowburn, right? There's, there's yeah, when he's it just comes really to good Genji player. And, you know, he 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 he, he has a good Farah as well. So we, it's just like wow. So if it's not, do they really care about finances in Overwatch League? I don't think they do. Uh, the you know, the, the team managers you know. definitely do, right? Like, I mean, I don't think they have unlimited budgets. So the part of the it's general manager role. Philadelphia Fusion Lepelos. Well, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, I'll just throttle more internet, I guess, <laughs> to pay for okay. it on so, those okay. fast lane tools. Sh- Shadowburn being, cu- ah, I'm just. I was stunned. Like it's Shadowburn. I mean, I I get it because you have EQO. It's just like would you have done that yourself? Redundancy. Sorry, go ahead. Would you have done that yourself though? The I I don't I don't want, no because I don't want him to go to a team that's gonna beat me. I mean, <laughs> I, I keep him. I mean, okay, I'm a general manager, so I I have to be. I have to think of the team now. If I was Shadowburn representative, then I'm doing whatever I can to get my guy released because he is yeah his, his, his value, contract. You know, his value is tanking here, right? No endorsements, no, it's just, you know, he does a stream at night every 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 couple of days a week, and that's about it. Whereas EQO stock is rising. Everybody's I'm gonna say forgetting Shadowburn because it's Shadowburn, but if I'm a general manager, I don't I don't think I, I can't let him go. I I he's valuable I to your team. He's he's the potential for him is so high. I, I I'm I'm looking at this team. I have no problem getting rid of Dayfly. You are you already know. I question him being signed. I question every time they played him. I I you know I, I hate to do it because this is this guy's livelihood. But Dayfly, you're done. I'm up close. When I talk about people being overwatchly great, if there's 18 teams, I still don't hire Dayfly. I'm, I'm I, just, I agree with you. I'm done with on that, that one. 
Joe Meister was like a foregone conclusion. We knew that was going to happen. Never played, dude. I never didn't, played. He didn't and need a token game. Like, didn't I didn't even QD. Uh, you know, they, they put him in videos, so he didn't even get cocoed. Uh, <laughs> Nept- like, so my biggest issue right here with this team is their support lineup being the weakest. And that's, if I'm making a move, this- it would be to shore that up. Boombox was inconsistent. Neptuno, great mercy. But you want a third person in there, particularly to play, uh, say, a Mora, which didn't see that coming out very well. I mean, not just slash that, but, but we, saw ne- we saw Neptuno get sick in the playoffs, right? I mean, yeah. hopefully he doesn't have, what is it, was it a gallstone or a liverstone? I forget, he has some kind of stone. Hopefully he doesn't have that, you know, hopefully that's 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 all over and done with. But there were times where he was sick, like, you know, a cold. We, we saw it, there's germs everywhere in Blizzard Arena. So you yeah. do want, you just want to have redundancy. I mean, it's, it's just a fact. Uh, I'm looking to sign. Uh, so, so cuts. Let's, let's look at cuts. With Shadowburn, Dayfly, and Joe Meister already gone, I don't think you have to. Uh, I'm not cutting them. I will not cutting them until you have replacements or, or uh, you, yeah, until Shadowburn, you have replacements. Dayfly and Joe Meister. I mean, Dayfly is gone. Joe Meister, obviously, something not there. They didn't play him. Yeah, no, but, they didn't. Uh, clearly, didn't like. And he was like a Lucio guy. We don't know if he plays anything other than Lucio. And there, even then, he would be because Neptuno is a good Lucio. Yeah. So. Yeah. And even then call, yeah it, yeah exactly right so so maybe like i can't tell you if joe meister is going to be picked up from another team he clearly did well last year in world cup for canada yeah. so yeah. i have a suspicion that he might get picked up by a team that that is a western based team prove himself at the very yeah. least but i'm not sure i'm not sure if he'll be picked up as a main so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens I mean, with him he's I, got competition I, I, from contenders jack so tato fraggy poco hotba I like the main tanks. I the problem is, I mean, they're not bad. It's just that as sooner or later you you come to the point where there's literally you can't. There's no one you can find who's better, right? Yeah. Like you take Sado and Fraggy. They're they're fine main tanks. They're not they're not gesture level. They're not Fisher level. I mean that's just a fact, dude. And it, it like you just there's there's limited resources. You know there's limited talent that you can pull there. So while I'm you could say you look for an upgrade, I'm not sure you'll find it. You take no, I, Coco, I agree. I like the problem then with with this team. I don't really like any of their Zarya's. If you if you have a flex, if you don't want to move a DPS player over to Zarya, then I don't really like any of their Zarya's here. Uh, the Roadhog was okay when they moved Boombox over there. When you know when we drop Zen when, for yeah. a, a, a Roadhog, it's one of their weaknesses. I think is off tank hot. I mean hot buff. Yes, I didn't get to see enough of. But Poco, I, I get it. Poco's got the bombs or whatever, but. Bombs that only get you so far. Like you and saw, he had issues it, outside outside of those bombs. I agree with yeah. you on, on that point. And I, I think he is a key player that you could potentially look for another team to want to pick up from you because you have Hoppa there. And if you can get Hoppa more integrated with the language of, that you're using on that yeah. that you know mixed team uh, by next year, then maybe Poco has value as a GM as a person that you trade. I sort of th- suspect as well Shadowburn maybe had a new contract coming up and he was just too expensive to keep on considering I mean, that happened. I mean, here's the deal. They the all, all, all the, I believe all contracts, all of them had options for season two. But again, it's, you know, Shadowburn with the value that he had at the start, you know, he, he probably had, you know, if, if money is a thing, then you're probably right there. You know, they didn't want to pay him what he was due. And, you know, perhaps they couldn't get, I mean, what we go back to trading here. It's just, yeah, it's sort, of, sort of crazy. I guess, but when it comes to DPS for for Philadelphia, I I'm comfortable with what they have DPS wise. Carpe, EQO, Snello. If they want to bring in a fourth, or uh, is he? Do we know? Is who are you old enough yet? I don't think so. I could be wrong. It might be part way through. I'm going to right quick. But if you are if who are you is old enough, then I'm signing him to a two way contract. Uh, if Genji ever becomes a thing, I'm like, who are you? Bring is him in. consistently one of the best. And that's and he's, oh, August 23rd, 2001. So, no, not for season two. There you go. He's season three. Wait, we no, can w- yeah, wow. 2001. Yep. Why? He's a year off, dude. That's wow, crazy that is, young. That is unfortunate for who are you, man. But yeah, well, I listen. Hopefully, Overwatch is still the thing by the time he uh, he gets I mean, old he's enough. He's always a good Genji. It's just, you know, I, I think I, I, I think I'm good. The only problem, the only thing that I'm worried about. If Carpe, you know, he got tired or whatever. If Carpe, as your widow, is off, uh, if he's just feeling off, you don't have anyone 
to step in as that hit scan. Yeah, like, that's just, that's true. So they, they do have room to make some pickups. I actually might look for hit scan specialists if I'm here. Um, if I if if I don't like what I'm seeing out of Poco and Hot Play in off season, then I'm looking for another flex tank as well. But I can else understand I'm pretty, that. I'm pretty good with. And, Let's move and on. That third support player. Let's move on and discuss uh, London Spitfire. The winners, they're oh. spot five. Jax, I'm going to try and speed it up from here oh, on we out. Are so far over budget. Uh, yes, we are time. over budget. Uh, okay, London Spitfire, winners of season one. They don't actually have enough players on their roster to make the requirements yeah. for season two. They need to pick up at least one more player. I mean, so let me, let me ask you this then. When the season started, you and I were both fans of teams that had the 12-man roster for internal scrim purposes yep. right but nowadays they've all got contenders teams or there's you know there's london let their players go because of there there, there was too much there was the, the rosters were being you over utilized right like i think there was a game they had five different you know substitutions which was which is a bit much so they trimmed it down they're like we got our core we're going to stick with this we're going to ride them all the way to the championship so if we're moving away from the absolute need for a 12-man roster then obviously you keep everybody here, right? You don't, I don't, I don't see, who would you, I don't see, I'm not cutting. I'm not, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't cut no one. You have a winning roster here with nobody yeah. that showed weakness. You cut no one from this roster. Uh, so then we talk about, okay, their coaching staff. I think they've done a good job. Uh, that's the problem though, dude. That's where I've got my question mark. Because while they got, while they're winning roster, it's because of the meta change, right? The meta for the playoffs changed. It fit them perfectly. Before yes. the Lepolos, like stage one, they, okay, you won stage one, but then two and three, and even during stage four, it was a struggle. It's just that the playoffs came around and it fit the players that they have here. Better, I, yeah, no, it, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that. Utilized. Absolutely, it's seriously, a coaching thing that I, I don't, you can't. I don't think a guy because he won, but I, I don't, I'm not, I don't like the coaches I, here. I, I think they do need to to at least change their attitude a little bit because like I, I mean I do like what they came out, out with but what they did was they took two teams and tried to meld them together and I think that's yeah. the wrong approach when you're trying to get a group because then they basically had two opposing forces uh you know and pre-existing drama es essentially going into each other right and particularly teams that faced each other as close as they, those two teams did and that was just going to be a hotbed we we lost Rascal and Fisher early in that and then later on Tizzy, Hagopan, Wuyal, and Hureg all also being lost to that. You know, like we're cutting down our roster to our best players Nickel, yeah. kind, of, kind of stuff. Um, I think that that was a result of their initial structure that he brought in where he's like, listen, I can't lose as I, I bring two winning teams together, right? And, you know, there was going to be fallout from that. And managing that fallout, uh, I, do, I do think the coaches – lost a handle on that with how they're trying to to get the teams and all the players practice or sorry time on I wish stage I knew what coach bishop did that had the team turn against them it was yeah. the team who said that they wanted him gone they went from winning stage one to cutting bishop in the middle of stage two and then things started sliding it's like what happened there and we'll, 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 we'll never know but what happened that the team turned on the head coach like it, that? one of those overwatch league unsolved mysteries right up there with coco <laughs> Jacks. I mean, so looking at this though, like if you take a look at the roster, the only spot they have overlap is support. I just it's clear I mean, where they why, need to pick up. Don't want to mess up a winning roster. I think you do need like bird. We saw birdering literally have wrist issues. Yeah. Now those, I mean, like number one think, spot, Jax, get, get another DPS, maybe two. It. I mean, I'm getting hit scan DPS. Although the profit, as he's, I, I can't disagree with the guy when he says he's the best DPS in the world. I can't. I can't disagree with Profit on that front. Uh, I am looking for specifically a hit scan DPS. I'm looking. I to, I'm looking for a person who can play any number of tanks here, La Yeah, like yes, a, a very flex Fury. tank. What a combination, Gesture and Fury are. No doubt about it. Fury, I think, the most underrated player in the playoffs. No one gives this guy enough respect. But great diva play. Great diva play, can particularly. Happen or something personal. He has to go back to Korea. You've got to have replacements. You've got to. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's cut that one short there because I agree with that one. We're talking about LA Gladiators next, oh. Jax. Your your team. So I'm going to let you oh. take the lead on this one because I'm sure Jax is going to be pretty excited to tell us what he has planned if he was GM of uh, I mean, the Gladiators okay. here. So 
the very first thing they traded Fisher, as we talked about earlier, to a Soul Dynasty. I 100 percent zero surprise. That. I I think I even said on this podcast I don't want to see him in a Gladiator jersey ever again. I he feel I feel as if he probably felt I'm Fisher. You know, no one's better, no one's more handsome. Yada yada yada, whatever. He felt he was bigger than the team, and they told him no to the to their detriment. So, congrats to that. Uh, to go with that, we've got Silk Thread out, Asher out, I remix out. You have Gladiators no main tank, Jax. We have no main tank, Leplos. That's no main tank on. I was listen. actually surprised that they cut I remix because you keep you kept I remix. Why? In case you have a prima donna to main tank, you have to have someone you can go to. Now that being said, Panker one thousand percent being signed from the Gladiator Academy team to main tank for this team. One thousand percent. That's, uh, Asher, that's Asher, not even a black star pick, right there, Jax. I I don't I don't think anyone was more critical of Asher than me. I see a number of people try to give this guy all kind of rope and slack and what. No, Asher, you're done. Stage three, fine. I think it was final game of the regular season. Them against Boston, Route sixty six in particular, and Striker schooled this kid. Asher. You're fine. I, I think Asher is good enough to be on one of the 18 potential teams for season two. He is not good enough for my LA Gladiators. I am glad that they removed him. Uh, right. Silk Thread, I take you back to his Hanzo play in the playoffs level. If I, if, if I want players who are ready to play in the big moment. I take a look at Dia. I said, Dia, you're done because you're not ready. Silk Thread, horrible in the playoffs. Horrible in the playoffs. And at this point, Lepelos, I hope that as a person, you know, I hope he's able to rebound from this. If I'm a general manager for another team, I have serious question marks next to his name. The Valiant were quick to let him go. Now the Gladiators have let him go. So I, that's two teams who were saying, um... I think he needs to be sure. in contenders, Jax, honestly, at this point in time. Uh, and I don't mean a two-way contract. I think if he's right. interested in continuing, he needs to show that he is star caliber at the contenders levels before he gets another shot at the big time. I agree with you there. So we're uh, left... The supports, Big Goose and Shaz. Uh, Shaz, please work on your ultimates, please. I'm begging you because even when I saw you with Team Finland, your ultimates were still off mistimed. But I love Big Goose and Shaz. I think you do want a third support just, again, because things happen. People get sick. You know, I, it's just literally because you have to, you want to have someone to replace someone if, if they get sick. So find someone. If you want Rolf from the academy team, you want to sign a Rolf to a two-way contract, I wouldn't That'd be, be great. To that. I wouldn't yeah, be I, to I'd that like that. Uh, so we go to off tank, right? Bishu and Void. Void. I, 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 I have hopes for. We have both had hopes for Void, Jax, right? Like, I, I, I remember him back from Apex, yeah. and he was one of the best back there. He was um, one of the best divas. I, as of right now, Void, you need to be very concerned because your job is not safe. Um, particularly with I, your I, other main Korean speaking player, Don and Fisher. Is the guy who, I'm going yep. void. I brought you over, man. I got you that paycheck. You're signed, <laughs> but now I'm out. So you're on your own. I void. Listen, Shanghai Dynasty. So I said Shanghai Dynasty. So Dynasty. Fire Zephyr, pick up Void to be your backup uh, off tank. And there you go. You've reunited them. Uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm this close to just letting Void go. It's just, I don't know if I got to see enough from him in the two stages that he played. Um, it's, it's his English improving because obviously there's communication problems if that's what Fisher was claiming was the biggest issue, which it then, blows, by the way, and which pisses me off. You say communication is a problem. So let's bench Bishu, our main translator in yeah. the game, and bring in Void, who doesn't <laughs> speak English. Man, even just talking about this team. Okay, I I, I agree. That, that was a horrible move. I, I could see letting go of Void. Again, wow. actually, I wouldn't let go of Void, though, because we're talking about all these teams need that backup. need exactly. flex tanks. Exactly. And guess what? You need a main tank. Who Let's has look, access main tanks? tanks. Okay, you need Philadelphia you need, Fusion. You, you need two main tanks. So I, I want to back up. And if I'm being honest, uh, Sure4, okay. Sure4 proved himself. Uh, All-Star Weekend won the Widow Contest. Fine. Sure4... I want consistency from him. Hydration, Lepelos, there's a question mark there. There's still a question, question mark, mark yeah. Hydration. I want a projectile specialist brought in. You know who I bring in, Lepelos? You know who I bring in? His name is Shadowburn. You <laughs> bring Shadowburn into the Los Angeles. Jax wants Shadowburn in there. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe they're in talks. I bet you he is in talks with somebody. I would not be surprised Lepelos, if it's this LA Gladiators team right here. I have already flown to whatever city in Russia 
wherever he's at, Saddleburn, sign the contract, my dude, and come back to L.A. for the Gladiators. 1,000%. The uh, tank is panker, and then you last, fill the gaps. Last thought, Jax. Uh, coaching staff, do you keep? He's got a chance. He made the playoffs. I mean, I... I, I would, I'd personally keep, too. Like, I would, I, I, as a general manager, manager I'd say... Manager. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there's two, there's two main issues I would have. Uh, uh, Personnel-wise, it was the, the, the Fisher issue, right, and controlling that. And some of that is Fisher. That, that is on coaching, yes. The second issue is uh, trying to be too, too, too much finesse in a game yeah. that sometimes is run with a hammer of team play, no. i.e. Right. tank heavy play. So You're right. Very much I would like to see I'd like to see them take that kind of an attitude into the micro level of their play a little bit more instead of the I mean I, you have to give them credit for the King's Row strat it did did pay off but I mean that's you, you can't people, do only strats like that because it, you no, will it, it's it, listen I'm, I'm not firing the coach I there were times in season one I wanted to if, if you all remember I I, I I it's the teamwork it's the personnel specifically the personnel that he let the Fisher situation get to the point where it, it it just blew up in their faces right in at the worst possible moment. Speaking um, of blowing but, up, though, Jax, can I cut you off here? Is yes. that all right? Go for it. Because we want to talk about gladiator. Boston this. Uprising next, oh, Jax. This, and you talk about blowing up. You, uh, let's talk about this team right here. Former players. I'm looking down this list. Let's go through them. Uh, obviously, you know, we had the the one player that, that was let go partway through the season <laughs> for very good reasons. Yeah. But if, since then, uh, we've had... Three releases on one day. Snow, Avast, Kalios. No surprise any of these players were released. And then the other one that happened today, Mistakes is gone as well. Another yeah, Russian player. Uh, there, 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 there's a volume check in, in chat here. Um, so I would just say Mistakes. I was surprised. When I saw this, I was, what are you doing, Huck? Like, that's 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 what I thought about when I saw this press release. I, uh, listen. Like, mistakes only played because Dream Casper was let go because he's an idiot. Um, and then I I don't well I I can't do it. no I don't let mistakes go <laughs> unless you've got unless they got people signed who they're just not announcing yet. Perhaps it's Shadowburn. You were talking about a team who wants Shadowburn up lows right here. You swap you swap one Russian for another. Well, again, this I... is a, if if I'm Hulk right now, I'm over there. I'm trying to beat the general manager for the Gladiators to uh Shadowburn's house because I want to sign him I, I agree with you yeah I mean he shouldn't have been writing that that nice release where his signature is over the borders <laughs> and they got all that sizing perfectly they should have been signing assigning the players that they need to replace all these people uh, uh with who snow, they have remaining Cal- okay the people that they let go those snow of ass Calios, I yeah I'm no surprise there that. but like you look at who's remaining i i think you keep all these people straker note gamsu calyx neko aim god i think they all they all did well in their roles including aim god who didn't we didn't see a lot of but i've got a question mark. An important I've role. Got, like small question marks next to kellox kellox and and aim god but i'm perfectly yeah. fine with keeping them you know because you've got your three i mean I'll, that being said i'm looking at this while while we don't want to fire them when you look at the importance that was put on support throughout the season, this is not the strongest support lineup, dude. It's it's a little it's a little soft, man. Like I don't I don't know where I don't know who's available for it. So and that's always a good question. Huh. So the the biggest question now is you have people with like stage experience now. They've had some stage one experience. Yeah. And you and this team was meant to be a, a, a team that is built from people that were not typically noticed. So you got them a bunch of experience now. Hopefully season two is where it really pays off, particularly with the the core people that you have remaining. I mean, I think there's value in that and there's opportunity if the off-season training goes well for this team to continue to do well. And uh, I, I, I think it's okay, possible. Let, let me ask you this. Hook has, you, you agree, Hook has to have already signed some kind of projectile specialist for them Absolutely. to let the states go, right? Like, it's just, it just hasn't been announced. I just, I am, I don't see how you can let mistakes go unless you've already got the replacement. I just. I think, uh, yeah, I think they either have multiple talks going on or they have somebody uh, in the works for mistakes replacement because I don't think they would, I mean, okay, D- DPS, I think there's an excess of people that, that can be hired. 
or or are looking right and maybe maybe you sign addo too who knows Jax? who knows right. right there are other people out there uh, that might be able to fit into your team so i think i think they can they can do well with pickups particularly in the dps role when you're looking at other teams struggling to to find tanks. what have we said tanks yeah. and to a lesser degree support so. I mean, that that being said, I like Gamsu solid. I'm perfectly fine with Gamsu as the main tank. I want to I want to back up just because we saw Gamsu disappeared for a few games with stage three. I think it was stage three where he just he needed a break. So you know there are these moments we just keep coming back to this. You got to have some kind of somebody here to back him up. So I do want a tank back up here. I do want another like right now. Leplos, they've got three support, one tank, one flex, one DPS. Like I want two DPS signed. I want two tanks signed. And if I can find it, I want another support player signed because I'm just not secure with what I have here. Kellex Nickel and Ingot. If 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 they if they like I can't doubt Huck because of what he did with this roster in season one. Like I, I had massive doubts about Boston, but he knew what he was doing when he signed that roster. If he's that secure in Kellogg's and Amgod, then okay. You can stick with, with these three that they have. I just massive question marks here i'm just i'm so worried about the support lineup the tanks gamsu and note okay fine striker please continue to work on your widow play i wasn't impressed at the uh, at the widow one you one at the all-star game but you know they got work dude like he's you yeah, don't the, fire mistakes left no. you just don't uh, yeah i'm sort of surprised by that one too unless again there is something internal or contractual yeah. that was happening between the two parties there and they had uh, other things on on the back burner for the uprising with the replacement. Let's go ahead and talk about number two team, Los Angeles Valiant here. It's a sort of a strange team. Let's just go through their lineup, guys. You may not be aware of everyone on the lineup, <laughs> right? You know, we have everyone we know. Agility, Soon, Space, Fate, Numlocked. Uh, sorry, did I say Numlocked? I guess we saw yeah. him a bit. Kareev, Verbo, Bunny, Custa, KSF, Finzi, Izayaki. There are there are players on this team that you've signed that we haven't seen. So the question I have for you as a, a potential GM here: Do you let go of these players that you picked up as potential growth players? I mean, the, the first question I have to ask myself as a GM: Why didn't we win? Like they won stage four. It's like what happened that we didn't win in the playoffs. Like it, it can't you can't say stage experience. Everybody had land experience at that point. Maybe you know it's fate, you're fine. Fate and like your tanks, right? This is yeah. tanks. I'm I'm good. Fate and space, we're good to go there. You want shot caller custa. Solid. Great. Solid yeah. there with custa. Um then you've got your second support. It could go I'm I might Chop around level lows. I mean, no, I'm not. I've got Kareev, like Kareev, yeah. who can flex like to anything. So honestly, I'm good with starting tank and starting support. I'm solid with those with those four. Then we go to DPS. All right. Yeah, I got a little question here, level lows. We got soon. Eh, his widow was okay. He was not consistent enough. If I'm being honest with you, agilities, Canadian, your boy, level right there, agility. In an, in an out burger. Uh, are you taking him to the In-N-Out Burger again? No, I keep a, I, I, I keep soon. I keep agilities. I am, however, looking for another big league DPS sign. But, but they brought here. in Bunny from no, Dynasty. Bunny okay, you talk about firing Lepelos. Bunny is gone. Um, I, I didn't see Finzi. So, like, since I didn't see Finzi or Izayaki, they were signed. For, I, I've heard things about Izayaki. I've, I've heard. I haven't seen it. If I'm general manager and I'm talking to my coaches and they're secure with those guys, then I keep them and I I'm I'm developing them, right? Yeah. I'm I'm putting I'm I'm working them up to where I feel that they're ready to play. But you've gone through the season and they haven't really played, right? They gotta go if you're not ready and you bring in someone. When it comes to I mean when it comes to their their starting six, I'm okay with it. It's just I would like their DPS supplemented agilities. I didn't like his Hanzo. When it came time to play Hanzo in the playoffs, it wasn't good enough. When his go-to is Farah, Farah is hit or miss. And I, agilities, I don't know if you're a starter. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I'm looking, Lepolos, for projectile player. And, I mean, I hate to say it, 
But if I'm Shadow Burns' agent, I'm salivating right now because the Los Angeles Valiant are right behind the Los Angeles Gladiators and the Boston Uprising looking to sign Shadow Burns. Uh, I, put- I, I, I don't know because the, the, the value of, of a player like that, and you already have somebody on your team that, just- that is fiddling that role. And Well, I, under- I understand your point. It's about who else is out there that's available that that's at a reasonable price, right? And if you're competing with other teams that don't have anybody... Right. That puts a huge price on them when you have agility. So the other option is oh, if you do sign Cameron them. Kate next season. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we get contracts released. We, of course it won't happen. But, of course, no, because there's no, I, I, yeah, I, I, there's I, I, no I, union, right? So we, we don't know the, these kinds of things. Uh, we don't even know how much money they're making, Jax, or how many viewers. There are no numbers is what I'm trying to get to on that point. But here, I think you're not wrong to have worries about agility. So the, the team had a huge... A huge media debacle about this with the In-N-Out Burger, <laughs> about this very issue, and it remains an issue, and I think it will keep remaining an issue until he I mean, the pro- okay. performs better. He is an Overwatch League level DPS, but Lepelos, at this point, where they finish, right? They finish second. Right now, you're trying to figure out how do we take that second place regular season finish to a championship. He, while he is Overwatch League ready, come time for the playoffs, he didn't bring it, man. He just didn't bring it. At right now, you need championship level DPS. Now yep. that you know they don't just grow on trees, so you're going to have to find it. It's just agilities. They need a third a DPS, Jax. I mean, like we that, that, that. They had already lit the fire on them when they took him to in and out, but I just level. It's not just him, but soon as well. Like, are are you happy? I, I can't really blame him because Gesture was all up in his face. You know, yeah, was, really good tank play coming out of Gesture there. Anti anti widow play from London there, but are you are you comfortable with soon? Like, are, I, I guess what I'm asking: Are you fine with these two starting DPS, or do you agree that they need to be looking for someone else who's a tier one DPS? I I mean, if yes, they need a third DPS. I believe most teams need three DPS, and I hate to call them starters because any one of them should be able to be starters yeah. in your top three DPS, right? Uh, because there is a lot of heroes that you need, you need to be able to cover on DPS for different maps. And I don't think the duo of Agilities and Soon can cover every kind of combination that might come up with all the changes in the meta that happens stage to stage to stage or between stage and playoffs, as we saw. And I think that was their their biggest problem is there was no like Bunny couldn't step in. KSF was clearly not ready either. And then it all fell on Agilities and Soon. And I think if you split that kind of weight amongst a third star DPS, they could do a lot better. So okay. Let me, okay, so uh, just take a quick look. We're keeping fate, space. We don't have a backup. Flex tank level of Envy was fired, if you remember right. They yeah. Have, like, take a look at They have no backup. I mean, like, I mean they, uh, they say Finzy, but... I mean, it, here's the problem I have, though. I mean, one, space played so well that they... Do you pick up... Do you try for Poco from Philadelphia Fusion as a trade for, like, say... Uh, I, I mean... No, because space is... If you got a diva, you want a diva, you got space. It's just... Ooh, I guess her agilities was the Roadhog player. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just I, Numlock is fine for the role that he that, that he's there for, which is backup tank. I, you know, um, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. They don't have an academy team, which I would like for them to actually like. I think they're the only ones now. I think Soul has an academy team. Dallas got one. I think those three were the only ones who didn't. Now the Valiant might be the only ones without an academy team. I would like them to pick one up because. Then at that point, then players like Finzi, Izayaki, or KSF, and I hope they didn't damage KSF's you know confidence because they threw him in at times where like he fourth just map, sucked. and yeah. you know you're, you're saying to yourself, why is he playing right now? So you know if you have an academy team, you can sign these players to two way contracts and get them some experience. Yeah, then go for it. But as of right now, Bunny though, I'm I'm cutting him up close. He's a tracer guy. And his trait, I mean, if you're a tracer guy, then you've got to be up there. And it's just, if I take Bunny, I put Bunny, I put him next to Asher. I'm saying I can do without these guys. They can go because when the time comes, and as I said, they're a number two team. That means your tracer player has to be championship level. Bunny is not. Bunny is not championship level. You you take Snilla over Bunny? I would. Would you take, yeah, take Striker yeah. over Bunny? So, of course, Sabobi. Of course, now I've got three people who already take him. Profit over Bunny? Okay, now there's four people I'll take over Bunny. No, you've got to go. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the, he's going to struggle, like unless he's being expanding his hero pool. And again, we don't know what's happening in the off season. Uh, I, I suspect he needs to to find a new team. And if there's expansion teams, he is ripe for the picking. And that's yep. what that's what you you keep him around for a trade that can earn you some money so that you can hire somebody better to fill that third star DPS role that you want on your team. So that's what I think is going to happen there. We're going to move on to the top team from uh, at least the regular season. That's the NYXL. We talked about their coach being let go. They also let go of their uh, second or a co-main tank, if you wanted to call it as they did. I think yeah. uh, the co-main tank of Janus being let go as well just a couple of days ago. Um, so they lost their, their main coach, or sorry, analyst. I said coach again. Yeah. He, 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 I don't, see, this is so strange. They have Pavane as head coach. They have Zed as assistant coach, but Wizard Chong was a regular coach. Well, yeah. when had when has this third coaching spot just magically appeared, man? Like when when has this become a thing? Like, I, I, listen, I, I you know I I'm I'm happy to talk about potential structures you could have as a GM. That's a whole nother thing about how you structure your coaching staff, particularly on a game like Overwatch, and how you need to have coaches for specific things. But uh, I'm very I don't know see, what, see, how they they handle it. If I'm Wizard Young. I mean, while you while while you want a job, I don't think he goes to a team where he'd be filling the same position of analyst slash coach. I think he's going someplace where he's a head coach, and that's why you know I yeah. I, 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 think, I go back to what you said about si- significant signings for uh, Florida, and I'm thinking Wizard Young to to Florida Mayhem. But uh, that being said, Lepelos, this team uh, we 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 know it right. This team they just didn't. There's another team who struggled in the playoffs, right? This playoff meta didn't fit them actually in stage four is when we started to see the slide when tracer disappeared and now here we are uh, there's you, cu- I, you cut I, there's janice, no one i cut i'm still i don't even know why you cut janice uh, but... you, the only reason i would cut janice right here right now is if i had somebody lined up to take a uh ryan main well no man was good ryan main uh, no i just you, you just a second a second flex a second tank, tank spot yeah a second flex tank spot because uh in in and that's not a knock against mecco but particularly in in the need to have a tank heavy lineup you need at least three good good tanks here and uh, it would be I mean, good to so- have somebody be able to fill that zarya role a bit better than having a pine or libero try and cover that or say blb to be honest when it comes in to- my opinion when it comes to the backup main tank, I just happened to click on over to XL2 Academy and I see that the main tank or one of the tanks on XL2 is Tizzy. So I'm I wouldn't be surprised if Tizzy is given one of those two-way contracts uh, for 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 next season to have him as your off tank, not off tank, as as your second tank behind Mano. It's just I look at all the time that they kept putting into Janice and I'm like. You kept giving him all the, you, you kept building him up all this time. I, I I hear a lot of people say Janice is is a really he's just he's a really good tank. He just doesn't fit their style. So if the style if it's that big important if it's that sorry if it's that important that he stylistically doesn't fit with New York, then okay, I can see letting him go. It's just I don't understand that. Like he's, uh, he's they a, say he's style, a, but like I honestly think uh, like the subtext here is I think sometimes he he goes a little bit rogue and yeah. doesn't follow the plan and that's an issue <laughs> it, I, right. like that's a subtext there when i when i hear a statement like that about a, a player and i think hopefully being released from this team will be a learning if, experience for him because i think definitely with the lack of main tanks out there he might have a role i fully, on the team okay, in the I fully expect janice to be in overwatch league next year i do if it's not with one of the current teams then one of the expansion teams for sure i expect janice to have a starting uh, starting job if I'm not sure it's starting. Teams, I, it's yeah. just eight levels. If there's six teams coming in. Uh, you, you think there's six t- main tanks better than Janice? Yeah, I would have to have go down the list. Right it's, probably not. Probably not. He he could. De- he's going to be fighting for a role on yeah. main tank. I, that's how I feel about it. So. Okay. Okay. So looking at New York right now, you've already talked about another flex tank, which I agree with. One, just for no other reason than to again reiterate backup. Right, Mecco right now. Sorry, yeah, Mecco is your only flex tank. So you do want to have someone to back him up on that one. You take a look at the supports. Jonak, Ark, Animal. That's solid, dude. So solid, that, yeah. That you, solid. Do not, you do not touch that. But, I mean, then you look at their you, you look up their DPS lineup. It's the same, same story. Sabi, Albi, Pine, Libero. Do you change that? The, the one thing that they will change, because he's 18 now, is, is Flower. 
There is, I mean, unless oh, oh. yeah, Matt that's going to be a fun pickup. No, no service by his performance on XL two. I, I, I think he actually looks bad when he comes in for XL two yes. compared to what they're already running. I think he just doesn't fit with that team. And I think in one of his in one of the interviews he gave, Wizard Young talked about Flower, you know, not being ready for that mixed comms kind of situation like they have in New York, right? But if you were to go to New York, he's reuniting with his old team, all the homies back together again. Yeah, full Korean point, roster. I mean, let blows. If you're giving me Sabolbi, Pine, Libero, and Flower, best DPS, that is uh, quad, quad what DPS, a DPS in, lineup, dude. You go what 0 4 2. You just do four DPS every time you win, right? You I just mean, have so honestly, like there's even though they did bad in the portal in the playoffs, I I I question the coaching there and the preparation. Like they have the talent to play what was hot in the playoffs, right? I still question the lack of Libero's Hanzo. In those playoff games, oh, I'm man. just how do you go from him being who he played more Hanzo than anyone throughout all of the Overwatch League and the quarterfinals? But plus, if you take all that time combined, it no one played more Hanzo than Libero, and he didn't even play in the quarterfinals. So that goes to tell you how much he played in the regular season. To go from that to him playing three minutes in their first series, what, wh- what, why, when, yeah. how they you know. They, they they stuck too much to their Jonak strat, to their old they, they expected that to just their raw talent to just carry them. So I'm hoping Pavane has learned from that. I'm pretty sure he has because that's just he's that good of a coach. Um so if the coaching staff is ready to mix it up, like if there's a huge meta shift, the coaching staff has to be ready to utilize these players because these are fantastic players. There is I just I don't I don't see any real weaknesses except for you know, at times maybe Mecca but Mecca was still he's really good. Yeah, he is really so good. No, they're gonna really continue good. they're gonna continue to be a top of the league, I think, in season two. They they really set themselves up. Hi, Jax, we're gonna end our G sorry. Yeah, I wanna please. is it okay to move move on, do you think? Yeah, like definitely I was supposed to say flex right. tank and backup main tank for Mano, which will probably be Tizzy. You go and yes, Flower. Yeah. Flower is going to be and Flower. Like, yeah, they're they're gonna remain super strong. That is for sure. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call our jam little uh Role play done there oh and move God. on to do really quick I rundown. only had one clock in chat. Oh <laughs> only one clock. I know this we're almost so coming up to two hours. Right. I'm sorry, guys. This has been a long one because there's so Holy much to crap. talk about with all, all that stuff. I, I knew it was going to be long, Jax. I'm going to keep these ones really short and just jump yeah. straight oh, to the see, finals. I wish, I wish, see, we almost need a second episode because I could rant on some of these contenders games, man. You could. Holy you could. We, could. we could hold off on all contender stuff until next week when we will not have a... Uh, I mean, Nick, episode. If you I wanted, mean, Nick, we could hold off. I mean, you say that, levels, but we have North American finals. Yep. We have um, Los Angeles qualifiers for World Cup. There's, no, let's just let's just get this out. I, I will try to be brief. Who am I kidding? I'm not really oh. brief. But <laughs> all right, here we go. China, China contenders. Jack's final game of the playoffs uh, for the win of contenders here. Lucky Future Zenith four one over LGD Gaming. Uh, I don't know Surprise. how much you watched. I watched the semifinals. I watched the finals. The best game of the playoffs would be the semifinal game between Lucky Future Zenith yes. and T1W Esports. What a game. What a throw by T1W. <laughs> yes. And you, don't, you probably get how hard I was pulling for them. Because, again, I don't, I don't hate Lucky Future Zenith. I'm glad the players are winning. I hate that they're in China. That's what I hate. I hate that these regions are being flooded by Korean talent. Please don't stifle the growth here. But TIW, they were so close, Lepelos, in the semifinals. So close. And they choked, like just massive chokes. And so then I'm left with thinking, okay, LGD Gaming, here we are again. My boy, my man, Eileen, going to step up. Because one of the weaknesses that Lucky Future Zenith had, they couldn't really deal with the Sombra that came out of T1W. And if they have Sombra problems, you know Eileen is the man. Leplos, one of the original Sombras that we loved way back. And they come out playing GOAT. And they played GOAT. And they tried to flex, but they so much GOAT because the flexing didn't work. And Lucky Futures and stomped all over the GOAT comp of LGD Gaming. I think we did see like Eileen at one point on the Sombra, he but tried. like barely. They, I, I, it wasn't really you know, close is what we're saying, Jax. You're always Jax. with what you planned for, right? They came in wanting to run code. Look, yeah. it was terrible. It, it, it was, was a terrible. bad idea. 
But thankfully, we can move to Australia, Jax. That's where we're going for another 4-1 victory. This time, it was Sydney Drop Bears in the, the finals here against Darkside, taking it 4-1. Darkside looking good off the start with that, that first victory there. But from there then on, it was more GOAT as Sydney Drop Bears uh, swept from then on. Uh, I, what, let's, what? It was just Darkside couldn't deal with GOAT whatsoever. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, Rialto. Side, Rialto. Let's talk out. about Rialto, Jax. I mean, Levels, Rialto. Let's go back to Volskaya. Let's go. It's the Farah, <laughs> dude. Okay. It is the Farah. Darkseid they... is playing GOAT. And you say, well, what counters GOAT? And then you look and you see Sydney Drop Bears. It's like, that's not a teddy bear flying in the sky. It's Farah. And Farah is just bombing them, embalming them, embalming them. And you're saying, hit scan. Anybody. Any hit scan. There's no hit scan from Darkseid. And they yeah. lose the map. You go to the next map. Wait a minute, is that Farah again? Okay, let's play GOAT. <laughs> what, more GOAT when it's Farah? Yeah, Level. but listen, I Sydney Drop Bears... I the podcast. I have not seen a team fail the Farah check this badly since Complexity and the TJO brothers. That team could never deal with Farah. Always a weakness of Farah. Dark-sided, atrocious play here with dealing with Farah, man. Holy crap, stop playing GOAT. Yeah, I I mean, if you're going to play GOAT against Farah, you have to get your value out. They did not do that. Farah um, stomped them. Let's move to South America, Jax. This one, even more one-siders. Brazil Gaming House, the ever uh. top-tier team in the region, taking over Isaris Gaming, the only team that's ever given them a challenge. Looks like Brazil Gaming House back in firm control of top in the region here with a 4-0 victory. Uh, the best you can do, say do, is Isaris Gaming, 6-5 on... Temple of Anudis loss was the closest map there was. Do 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 I even need that? We that actually wasn't close because it was. Yeah. They had four minutes. Like so, yeah. I mean, Isra's gaming was out of time. They got five, and I think they got a few percentage points. And but then it, I mean, it's two CP. Attack, they had four minutes. Like yeah, I mean, like point. four minutes after three rounds. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So, but I mean, th that being said, this is more the same. Like I I I think. Goats works in ladder play. Like if you're just doing competitive play in an overall, you log in. Oh, yeah, let's play some calm goats, right? You're struggling, guys. Just get the goat out and start running. Every team whose initial plan was to play goat in the finals here, in these three finals, lost all three of them. Their main go-to was goat, and it just didn't work. Like when Klaus flexed off of goat, he really impressed me at times. I, 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 I there was there, there was. It might be a, I so. I think in short, Jax, if I, if I could take that point, I think yeah. what we're what we're seeing is it's a strong strategy. But since it's so strong, and you expect a team to run it, and certain teams are just only practicing and running that, if you get good at that counter, you can shut it down really hard. And I think that's been what's happening to some of these teams, particularly the teams that are uh, the underdog, right? Where they're like, we can we can make up for the skill gap here by running goat, right? Like that's going to yeah. be our way. And then the better teams, it's like we know we are going to run goat against us, so we're just going to run yeah. the counter to goat and perform that well. So we're, we've been watching that happen. I I, uh, I I put a link in chat there. Um, it was it's a list of all everything that Brazil Gaming House has won. Yeah, we're at the point now with this team of lows. There's not like it's the smallest prize pool in contenders in South America. They don't get. They never get any respect from Blizzard when it comes to anything. They just. They. 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 They don't. Right. We're fortunate enough that Blizzard allowed the broadcast.gg team to give us English cast. I think we had Ham Tornado and I forget who the who the guy. The was. guy was. Uh, yeah, they did. They did a pretty good job. I mean, the broadcast GG also did the Chinese one. I'm forgetting there. Well. Yes. You know. So we good had, job on had, both we, of them. We had, we had broadcasters. We had analysts for the first time for English. Sorry, in English, for South America. I. I, I look at this here, what they've won, Lepelos. There's no room for them to grow. Like, there's literally, like, they made roster changes that improved their roster this season. They, they said this is the best that they have. I think five out of their six players are representing Brazil in the World Cup qualifiers this weekend. That, that seems to be the only time that they have to show what they've got, dude, is in World Cup qualifying. But that's not, you know, that that's not, in, that's not... It's frustrating, right? Because I like, I want to see growth. I want to see these small regions grow. It's the same reason why I hate seeing Lucky Future Zen in China. 
Yeah. It's why I said earlier, I want to see Brazil Gaming House versus Lucky Future Zenith. I want the next, like Blizzard, they're trying here. I want, it's going to cost them. I want the next step to be a tournament of champions for contenders. I, yeah, I, definitely. Because, get get them together. How do I know? How could the Sydney drop bears when they beat up on teams in Australia? I don't know, dude. Let's get, take it the next step. People will watch. Are you kidding me? Advertise it on the launcher, and you'll get 30,000 viewers. Get Help a spray us, for it, right? Like a, a simple skin, something like that. Look, you know? tournament of champions. We take North America. Well, we have what seven contenders leagues. So you know the, the odd number doesn't exactly work there. But there's there's way there's ways around it. Yeah. Give me a tournament of champions. I mean, I just, a lot, a lot of potential it, f- I, could I, come I, out I of look that. Look at this. I'm sorry, not close. This team is dead. <laughs> I mean, yes, they're alive. There's Financially, no though. To go. Financially, like they got, they're going to be uh, running up a struggle when you're facing low prize pools. I, I guess the low prize pool Jax keeps a O2 Ardent Lucky Future Zenith out of your region, though, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> local talent, it's working. Uh, okay, Jax, let's go ahead and move on to some actual local uh, yeah. competitions going on really quickly. Starting with the Land Story Cup, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mention quickly this was uh, between. Four teams here. It wasn't a big surprise when we saw T1W Esports Club take this one 3-0 over the Gen Esports in the finals to, to take the victory of this Chinese tournament. We, uh, we, we, we spoke about this before. Uh, Lao Yin B, Legend Young Beyond, was disqualified probably because they didn't have a Chinese team, and this was four Chinese teams. The biggest story yeah. here, Lepelos, is if you go to the online qualifier, and you go down to the quarter or the round of eight quarterfinals, Lingan Esports versus LGD Gaming 3 0, and it wasn't close 3 0, 2 1, 2 1. This is LGD Gaming who finished, you know, second place in Contenders China. And I talked to you about how their, their main go to was GOAT. It was just basically this last two weeks has been disappointment for LGD Gaming, and not just disappointment for them, but disappointment for Chinese Overwatch Lepelos. Yeah. Where are the Chinese players supposed to come from to represent these teams in Overwatch League? I you, you, we, we talked about it earlier um, where I said I keep Dia as my sole Chinese uh, player and then I bring in a team full of Koreans for Shanghai. For the Guangzhou, there's a rumor saying that players from LGD Gaming are being signed for that team. Not a chance in the world, dude. Are you seeing these results right now? Yeah. TIW or T1W has shown me so much more with, especially with how they played against Lucky Future Zenith, and even they lost. So if if you're looking to build a Chinese team, Lapos, where is the talent going to come from? It's definitely it's not I, here. It's definitely a trouble for the region in terms of their development right now. They're, I felt like they were closer in the past, but they haven't yeah. been keeping up, and it's sort of sort of sad that way. I mean, I, I look at miraculous youngsters who all piece. They're like, wait a minute. Yeah, they moved on, on into another game. They went PUBG. They're yeah. probably playing Fortnite right now. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I mean, and it's it's a best, shame they and they left. Yeah, big big concern for talent from the Chinese scene, and that's going to impact, I think, the future of Overwatch League in China as a result of that. But let's move on to another small region that we don't talk about much about. This one, we're just going to mention that the main tournament of this one has been rescheduled. It has a two hundred and sixty six thousand dollar prize pool. Say small region, look close. That's look at the prize pool. That prize pool is. Re- Ridiculous, but not it's not going to sound so crazy once I tell you which region it is. We're talking about Saudi regional tournament online qualifiers here, but for the main tournament, it has Bahrain, Egypt, Kuwait, Lebanon, Malaysia, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, United Arab Emirates as potential uh, backers. It's been a year, I think, or longer since we've last gotten to talk about this region. So there are very few familiar names here in the top eight seeds. I'm just going to list them here so we're, we... We have it as a posterity, I guess, for the future. But uh, we have the Oshtek Warriors, the Red Zone, Ryzen, AWZ Esports, Inferno Game Zone, 4DX Esports, Inferno Game Zone, Frost, Power Esports. Man, Jax, I'm pretty sure I just went through the lineup Gatorade right there. Yala used to dominate Middle Eastern Overwatch. You know, honestly, I don't know. uh, I'd have to. One sec. I'm going to look up Yala and see. See if I can. Uh... I wish I knew where these servers were were were, were located because I, I recently learned today that there, there are Jax, no... I have an answer for you, yeah. right now. Inferno Game Zone is all the players formerly of 
Yala Esports. Yes, my dude. I play boy. I remember. Oh, my goodness. And yes. see, so we, we still get to cover the former Yala e, uh, Yellow Esports They're players back. now yes. Inferno Game Zone. So, I remember, wait, Dizzy, is Dizzy the same guy? Let me see, I remember the name. Yes, it is. It is. Oh, yep. fantastic. Yeah, I, I was like, I was surprised that I was like, wait a minute, Yala was routinely finishing in, in, in the top here of, of Middle East and Overwatch, and the, where did they go? And here they are. So good to know. I mean, hopefully, I they, they were was, undefeated in their, their round in their uh online qualifiers here. I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. Hopefully, we get to see this tournament. I, I I get it. I think every time they wanted to have it, it was something going on, like All Star Game or qualifying for Incheon, and even now, I, I it was supposed to. If I'm not mistaken, it was supposed to have been last week. And yeah, last weekend was when, or last week was when it was supposed to have this tournament. But of course, that was All Star Game week, right? So they keep have they keep getting it pushed back. And the next three weeks are all Overwatch World Cup qualifiers. Or it's a contenders final. So I'm assuming sometime in the beginning of October is when we might actually get this land uh, final here. It looks like it's going to be broadcast on Twitch. $266,000 prize pool. Levels. That's like. I think that's the largest outside of Overwatch League uh, in uh, like yeah, for yeah, secondary yeah, tournaments yeah, since I, since Overwatch League though. Yeah. Oh, oh right. definitely. I mean, there's yeah. contenders is 50k for 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 yeah. North America. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and that's where all the the pros are being pulled from. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool that they're they're that they're doing that. Uh, let's move on talking about the qualifier in Ninchin, um, really quickly for the Overwatch World Cup that happened. I, yeah. I watched some of that too. That was like oh, what a weekend. Of yeah, uh, much of that. Uh, cutting it short, South Korea five and zero on their their standings to end up in first. Finland only losing to South Korea make it out as well with a four and one scoreline. No upsets here, Jax. Japan not even upsetting Russia. Russia no, not able Japan, to upset yeah. Finland. Although I believe Taiwan, that match. Taipei, you know, they just can't hang. Uh, poor. That's another reason, dude. Flash Wolf's gone, and it's like, wait a minute, who was the guy? Who I want Taipei. For Flash Wolf? Bacon. Where is Bacon Jack Leplos? Oh yeah, is we we have not seen him. It looks like he might be done. Who knows? He's probably gone to chase that PUBG slash Fortnite money. You know. I, I read a post on Reddit that said, when it comes to preparation for this event, Finland prepared to beat Korea. Russia they got prepared close. To beat Finland, right? They, like they came in with different goals, and it kind of when the games when the, when the games were played, you can kind of see that was how Finland played South Korea very close. Now South Koreans will say, okay, it was our first game. We we not, not first game, it was, it was second game. I think we weren't really. Gel, Ready. Uh, they weren't gelling yeah. as a team. Excuses, I don't want to hear that. Finland played them extremely close here. They just, you know, just not close enough that they lost. Uh, Russia, they put it all on beating Finland. It just didn't work. So no surprise, I guess, seeing South Korea. Finland. I was hoping that Team Japan would step up, maybe play spoiler, because of how well that you know that team had been doing. Um, and I guess that I answered sad. something else that we had questions about too. Uh, this this team that's doing very well in the oceanic region yeah. uh, can't can't compete. <laughs> Sorry, I mean they're they're competing, but they're competing against uh, teams from other regions, including Russia, which had what two Overwatch League players and yeah. then a bunch of players in Contenders EU, and you had that mashup of a team versus one full team that's been playing all year long. Yeah. I mean, and and not not just that they're playing on the current patch because yeah. it's what they were doing for for their contenders, and it's like. It's still still not enough. Not so enough. that that region is still needing some development as well before yeah. they can can compete seriously. Uh, so that that was a good answer. Uh, we have more World Cup upcoming, I believe, this, this week, where you have the World Cup in Los Angeles. Here we go back to LA again. I tell you, yeah, um, yeah. is it okay? We've got United States, Austria, Brazil, Canada, Norway, Switzerland. Is uh, let's let's just take you know. I think as of right now, favorites to qualify United States and Canada, right? So you look at Team Austria, and no, just just no. Team Norway, Norway's got you know they they got a couple of good people. I mean, but do you think it's enough to be? I I don't. I don't. USA? I, I think the the sleeper here, yeah, the sleeper is if Brazil Gaming House can actually hang this year. Levels, we, we, uh, okay. I don't know. I just have to say we've been here, right? Like yeah. we did this last year yeah. where we said. We were looking, it was the same qualifier in Los Angeles. We had 
Flash Wolves, Taiwan Taipei, and, and we had Brazil, Brazil Gaming House, were saying, are they ready to play? And they got they got smashed. Dude. And they absolutely did. And I, I suspect the same will happen this year. And Brazil Gaming House needs a good showing here. They, if, if they can't get at least second, they need to absolutely dominate every other game and keep their games against both U.S. and Canada tight in order to show that they're real competition. And I think anything I think less than the, that, for me, is a disappointment. For, I, I think that was one of the problems we had with them last year is that while they came in third, it wasn't dominant wins over the lesser competition, right? Yeah. Like they they struggled at times. Like you want to see four O's. If you, it, it, I mean honestly, I'm looking at the Norway team here, Lepolos. I would like a four O or three one over Norway if I'm Brazil, like to show me that you know you're knocking on that door. Or I mean, can they play spoiler? Anybody can play spoiler. It's just I'm looking at Team United States here. I'm looking at Team Canada. They've got coaches, like they've got significant coaches over there. Arrow, oh, they got Coach Jane here for Canada. And I guess we've we got, got that fuel coaching coming in, Jax. That's what you're saying. I mean, I'm 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 looking here at Switzerland. I don't know. So it's like USA and Canada. So let me ask you, love, who finishes top of the group? I think US is gonna finish top of the group. If I had to if if I had to guess, uh I, I do think US is gonna be able to to get it. And that Yeah. I'm I mean, at the, listen. I'm looking at U.S. Their support line, massive question series. Moth and Rockus. This is a time for both these players, as as general manager, to show me. Uh, yes, it's not team play, but it's still pretty big, pretty big here. You know, national play here. I we have Rockus the... in, like Rockus in particular, so questionable, dude. Like e- even Team USA fans are like, can we get sleepy in place of Rockus? Like this is what a number of people were wanting, myself included. So I think there is a chance. I think Team U, if, if those two are ready, I think they'll beat Canada. I'm hoping it's a good game, though. I'm hoping it's as I, good I, as Finland versus South Korea was. I definitely think it's going to be interesting watching all three outlaws supports playing the same we game. We got Banny. I don't like Banny, dude. Ugh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll 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 see what happens when when they they match up too. Wait, it's Joe also going to be. Didn't even qualify for Canada. He didn't even. Yeah, exactly. They brought in Crimso, and uh, I think. Uh, I mean, some of that is because you don't see Joe Meister, and he's, I was hoping he could use that, you know, to try to. You know, earn some money for season two. No, Joe. Money. Who knows? Uh, and didn't even get the sous chef position, I guess, here for Team Canada. But uh, poor Joe Meister. I think we're done, guys. Uh, oh, this has been episode 100. Long. We went really long. Thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate all the support we've had. Over 100 episodes, Jax. Two years. That's crazy. I know we talked about uh, two years when we came up to that in August. Yeah. We're probably going to be a couple of weeks before we do another one again in the future. So in the meantime, make sure you guys join our Discord if you if you want to keep on talking Overwatch League or Overwatch. Let me, okay. Let me ask you a little bit. Since the next three weeks All right. have qualifiers, I I'm thinking towards yeah maybe on the 23rd. This is tentative, people. Because the next three weeks all have qualifiers. And I think we also have contenders finals mixed in along the way. So I think come the 23rd, we'll be done with qualifying. And I think we'll also be done with contenders around the world. And we can just mash it all together in a nice, big, happy ball. And by that point, we'll have more Overwatch League news to talk about and GM about. Oh, so my goodness. Yeah, so much levels, probably. Mark us down for the 23rd of September. Very tentative. It's, like, it's, a, it's a light question mark, but you know. Would, is that going to be episode 101 where we school all these jams on what they should have done? But uh, yeah. no. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think I, I think it's not until October 8th or 9th when the, uh, what am I saying? When the expansion signing, teams can yeah. start signing players. And I'm hoping also that by September 23rd, we'll have more announcements. And hopefully we have all the announcements about these expansion cities that are, that, that are coming in. So like I said... September 23rd, people, mark us down. There's a really good chance of us having our episode 101 then. But as Lepolo said, thank you. Two years. I personally didn't expect to make it this this far. I think everybody who has been with us, everybody in chat, on iTunes, wherever you listen to us from, listen to us from. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, we're going to end it there, Jack. So you guys know where to find us. We said it time and time again on Twitter, Discord, everywhere else. Uh, and we're just going to play the music. 